FPP Radio News online at fppradio.com. After the USDA unveiled its updated roommate food pyramid earlier this week, Department of Agriculture spokesman Michael Lowry spoke to Onion reporters about just how many servings of someone else's food roommates should be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. Under the new guidelines, roommates should eat at least four portions of someone else's grains per day including one to two cups of already opened cereal. Of course, this is all in addition to the eight to 16 swigs of milk and orange juice spaced out over a few days. Lowry emphasized that many aspects of the new roommate food pyramid are unchanged from the previous version, including a recommended daily intake of 24 ounces of lunch meat straight from the bag and five to seven weekly finger scoops of Erica's peanut butter. Remember to limit your intake of sugar and sweets from half open containers, especially if they're Jessica's, cause she'll definitely notice. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome to Free Talk Live. Join us here on the radio waves and bring up anything you want to discuss at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you on the site. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. And Johnson. And Danica. And uh, so, of course, lots to talk about here tonight, including a shocking story. Johnson, you're going to be telling us about it. At least the headlines sound shocking. I don't know anything more about it. It's uh, the banning of trolling in New Zealand. Also, the First Church of Cannabis is has apparently filed their lawsuit that uh, we had discussed earlier uh, in the week, the possibility that that was going to happen. They are suing, uh, apparently they're suing the state of Indiana and the city of Indianapolis. So we can talk about that. Of course, whatever's on your mind goes as well. 855-453. Ross Ulbricht has written a letter, a public letter, which is being touted as the first letter that has been released from Ross Ulbricht publicly, but that is not true. The first letter that was released from Ross Ulbricht was written to an activist here in Keene back in February mm. and was ultimately restricted by request of his parents and by request of Ross directly. In the case that it had some sort of impact on his final That was the hearing. fear, was that it was going to uh, have a negative effect on his sentencing uh, because in the letter, in the this first letter, not the one that's been getting a bunch of play in the tech websites today, but in this original letter, he kind of, you know, basically supports the activists. He supports Derek J, who's one of our co-hosts, uh, and other Keene and Manchester Liberty activists who drove down to the trial and held signs outside of the courthouse supporting Ross, and they didn't want that, uh, his opinions, to possibly affect the uh, the sentencing, which, of course— it had no effect on the sentencing. It was, uh, you know, they threw him to the wolves. They sentenced him to a right. life in prison because he created a website. And for those who don't know, we're talking about the Silk Road. That is the underground or was the most infamous underground drug marketplace on the Internet in the so-called dark web over the Tor anonymizing network. Uh, Silk Road's been taken down since October of 2013. Silk Road 2.0 came up, lasted about a year, then got taken down. There is a third Silk Road, but it is nowhere near the uh, the popularity of the original Silk Road. So I think I think that particular brand is pretty much sunk uh, at this point. And now the the man who created it, Ross Ulbricht, is sitting in a prison cell and may be there for the rest of his life. So here's a story from Joe Mullen over at ArsTechnica.com where he writes, Convicted Silk Road mastermind Ross Ulbricht has made his first public statement since he was sentenced to life in prison, writing a letter addressed to Porkfest, a libertarian gathering that he has previously attended, which is, to my knowledge, not true. Uh, that's a misinformation. I don't believe Ross Ulbricht has ever attended right. the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Right. I mean, that'd be pretty cool, but I'm pretty sure that that hasn't occurred. Well, his he does make has. it seem like it in the letter. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe he did go quietly there one year. Actually, I haven't even honestly uh, looked through the letter yet. I only glanced at <laughs> it. I figured if it was from Ross, <laughs> it must be worth reading. Uh, let's see here. He uh, Here's the actual letter. Hi, Porkfest. I'm writing you from my cell in New York City. Sorry, I couldn't make it this year. 
Unfortunately, the worst case scenario has played out for me, and I've been sentenced to spend the rest of my life in prison. Right now, um, I could be misinterpreting very easily. It's that that line right there. Sorry, I, I couldn't make it this year. That does just make means it he se- couldn't make it this sure, year. Sure, but it does seem to make it seem like he's been there before. No, I think you're reading too much. Well, into if you it. remember, his letter in February did say that he hoped to make it this year. This was, of course, okay. before the yeah. ruling. So maybe that's what you're thinking of. Good point. Yeah. Uh, so he goes on to say, I am an eternal optimist, though, and I will never give up hope for my release. I have confidence that the appeals court will recognize the errors by some and outright corruption by others in the government and give me some kind of remedy. It could be a new trial where hopefully the whole story can be told or the case could be dismissed altogether. <laughs> Seems unlikely, at least in the latter part. But maybe, maybe he has a chance of getting a new trial for those who... Have not been following the case closely. There are at least two federal agents who have now apparently pled guilty, from what I've heard, uh, to felony charges of basically being corrupt scumbags. Wow. They, uh, yeah, I don't know if you'd heard about that. They, no. they did plead guilty. Uh, one of them was a Secret Service agent. The other was a DEA agent. They were both involved in investigating Ross. They were involved in the takedown and all of that. And turns out the DEA agent, Mark Force is his name, he was actually masquerading as different roles on the Silk Road site. He would use multiple accounts to essentially blackmail and extort Dread Pirate Roberts, who was the operator of the website. And he was also uh, giving him insider information, giving, again, when I say giving him, I mean giving Dread Pirate Roberts, because there could be more than one person who was Dread Pirate Roberts. That was it was never really proven in the in the trial that it was Ross Ulbricht the entire time. The jury sort of bought the idea that it was Ross Ulbricht enough to convict him, but I wasn't convinced. And the story from the defense was essentially that someone else was Dread Pirate Roberts at some point. So maybe it wasn't Ross that was extorted by this DEA agent. Maybe it was the other guy, and maybe it was the other guy, or at least one of the other Dread Pirate Robertses who was given the heads up that, hey, you're under investigation by the federal government. Because if you remember, the first thing that one of the first things the defense said in their opening statement was that Ross got uh, he sort of let go of control of the site, gave it to somebody else to to handle or sold it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then later was somehow roped back in to be set up as the fall guy for the takedown of the site. So it's possible that this corrupt DEA agent gave information to the different Dread Pirate Roberts that, hey, you're under federal investigation right now. You better watch out. Then that other Dread Pirate Roberts got out of there and somehow managed to entice Ross to come back and take over the site. Right. That was the story from the defense at the trial, and it sort of fits at least with the idea that you know, this supposed these hitmen for hire were brought in and one of them was right. this undercover agent. And anyway, so these federal cops, they are uh, they pleaded guilty to corruption. They were trying to steal Bitcoin. They were extorting money from Dread Pirate Roberts. They were s- siphoning money off the top of the confiscated Bitcoin that the government had taken. And that's just scratching the surface of what they did. And so the fact that, you know, these guys were involved pretty heavily in the takedown of the site and the arrest of Ross Ulbricht suggests that, well, a lot of that evidence is no good anymore. A lot of the evidence that the federal government was presenting here essentially is tainted by the fact that two of at least two of their agents, and there may be others who are being investigated now too. Who knows how how wide or deep this particular corruption scandal goes here. Sure. So we got two that have gone down already, and that should invalidate quite a bit of the, uh, the evidence at the the original trial. So hopefully that alone will be enough to grant him a at least a new trial. I highly doubt it's going to result in the case being kicked out entirely. Right. But I suppose it's possible. Maybe a less severe sentence, I I hope. Now I wonder if with a new trial, one you know, you get a new judge and two if would it, the, get, would it get a new judge? Well I would you would think so, right? Wouldn't it be a new judge? I don't judge? know. Uh well okay. So That'd That'd be nice. potentially a new Trump. judge, which I think could be interesting. Because <laughs> this judge was awful. Right. But then the second question would be, will the family this time be more amenable to activists being present? Darn good question. That would uh, that would definitely be a good question to ask his mother, because I don't think they feel like they did anything wrong by restricting the activists. Right. Because it was the first day the activists were out there with signage, and they were doing jury outreach. And then uh, after the first day of trial, the judge threatened Everybody in the courtroom, right. except for the jury, 
they threatened that they were going to sequester the jury and keep them basically locked up. But so what? Like nothing would have changed. You're like, okay, so you threaten that. Good for you. Keep well, threatening the, that. The, the, because it wouldn't make a, it didn't make a difference. It the judge didn't still make threw, a difference. threw the book at, at Ross, you know, like Right. And so uh, I what does it matter? You, you know, I, like, well, look, but hindsight's 2020 20 sure. from this the perspective but of But that's a what mom I'm saying. Who, now they have 2020 20 hindsight and they yeah. can say, well, maybe this, you know, maybe this time let's see how it plays out if we let the activists do what they have come to do. It's all ultimately going to be up to Ross, right? I mean, the the claim was that it was Ross, Ross wanted who, them there, I thought. No. No. Oh, really? Okay. No, he he had agreed with the idea of them being uh, asked to leave. He supported them what they were doing, but at the same time, right. agreed to have them not do that anymore. Right. And it didn't work out. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. There's a little bit more here to Ross's letter that has now been published. Thanks to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. We'll share more of it coming up here. 855 450 free. You can join us. For P150, P150GA, P150LK, P150TN, C250A, C250E, C250Q. Not available in all states. Have you put off seeing the dentist because you can't afford to go? Are big dental bills taking a big toll on your wallet? Would you like to have dental insurance but think it's too expensive? If you answered yes to any of these questions, call Physicians Mutual Insurance Company for a free information kit. See how you can help protect your teeth and your wallet by calling now, 1-800-496-5920. This is real dental insurance that can help cover over 300 procedures, everything from cleanings and fillings to crowns and dentures. Your acceptance is guaranteed for one of these insurance policies, even if you're retired. You can see any dentist you choose, and you'll never pay a deductible. Call in the next 10 minutes, and we'll rush you a free information kit with all the details. 1-800-496-5920. That's 1-800-496-5920. 1-800-496-5920. Quantitative easing, unemployment at depression levels, Europe financial system falling apart, China getting out of U.S. treasuries. At the end of 2008, the time of TARP, the national debt was at 11 trillion gold, trading around $850 per ounce. Close to 2012, the national debt exceeded 16.4 trillion, gold doubled to $1,600 per ounce. The 20 trillion threshold for the national debt is inevitable. Politicians in Washington have a ferocious appetite for spending and stimulus. What's worse, a printing press to finance. A hundred years ago, we had a gold standard to limit this madness, but now you have to adopt your own gold standard. Don't be fooled with paper promises. Get Midas Resources 10 Reasons to Buy Gold free by calling 800-686-2237. Understanding the gold and silver market may be the only insurance you could have to avoiding the next economic crisis. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order your free copy. Again, that's 800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Welcome back. More Free Talk Live now here at 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype in here at username lrn.fm. It's Ian Johnson and Danica in the studio. And don't forget about ProXPN. If you get online, whether it's your cell phone, laptop, internet, uh, on your home computer, desktop at work, whatever, if you got ProXPN, you're encrypted. Your internet connection will no longer be able to be spied upon by your very own internet service provider. They are likely... Uh, recording every website that you visit and all the uh, search terms that you enter. And they're probably logging that information for, in some cases, as long as several years. You can put a stop to that by using ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and uh, you can get started there with Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, pretty much whatever operating system you're on. They've got a ProXPN for you. You get connected with ProXPN, and you are protected from uh, prying and spying, go to proxpn.com slash FTL. And when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, because you can start for free, but the free account is fairly limited in bandwidth, you get unlimited bandwidth with a premium account. Servers around the world you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, uh, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50. You'll get 50% off the regular monthly price when you get their annual account with code FTL50. Breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month, and that price is good for the lifetime of your account. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and don't forget promo code FTL50. As we continue here with the Silk Road letter. This is the first, I would say the most accurate way to describe this letter is the first letter that Ross intended to be released publicly. Because <laughs> <laughs> he did send a letter to a, a keen activist back in, I think it was February after his sentencing, or excuse me, after he was found guilty, before his sentencing, after he was found guilty. And uh, that letter I did publish at freekeen.com. I didn't ask permission to publish it and subsequently was requested to remove that from being published. I did and out of respect for, for Ross because I actually wasn't sure if it was just his mom who was saying, hey, take that down, or if it was actually Ross who wanted that not to be public. Right. And so I actually was able to talk to Ross, and he did explain to me that, yes, you should take that down. And so I did, um, but I don't think me publishing it had any effect whatsoever on that judge and her decision to sentence him to life in prison for basically coding a website. Oh, you don't think you made Forrest Grump even more grumpy by publishing that? Come Forrest on, is the fun. Forrest Grump is the fun name that uh, has been applied yeah. to this judge, Judge right. Forrest, in this case. But yeah, I highly doubt she was given a, a copy of you know his. Letter I know. I'm trying to be and funny. <laughs> made her decision there. I mean, look, she she had it in for Ross from day number oh, one sure, yeah. in this trial and was ruling against him in the defense time and time again. It was really clear. In fact, the federal prisoners we talked to that had called the show we were on in Marion, Illinois, and there's actually a federal prison there, and a lot of the guys listened to us. And this is really. They I'm, said he was going to get life. I mean, this knew. is this is really you know as I think about it, this boils down to a, a particular set of logic with uh, how this is sort of working uh, with government attacking the internet and attacking websites. And, and it's sort of like how government works on a lot of levels, which mm -hmm. is that what they're doing is they're using a proxy, right? They're saying that um, basically uh, someone is responsible, like a website is responsible, a website operator is responsible for the content of what the um, users are saying. And I guess I'm kind of comparing this in my mind to... Um, where you know where else is government one step removed you know they sort of say like uh you know you're uh, like 
uh, a liberal Democrat will try and get away with saying, well, I don't support violence. I just elect the people that send the cops to your house to steal the money from you in taxes. It's like a proxy, right? Like there's one mm-hmm. step removed from actually being responsible. So, so their hands are clean, right? Their hands are clean. So they're, you know, they're, we're not actually, you know, we're, we're we're protecting people by, you know, making sure that these website operators are responsible for their users' content. It's like it's ridiculous. It's like the, you know, this these users can just go to a different website and post content and just keep destroying, you know, completely uh, un unfettered. And, destroying uh, reputation. Yeah, or? destroying reputations of websites, getting sites sites shut down. I mean, because they're not being held responsible. They're, the parties who are doing the damage are not the ones who are being held responsible. Well, right, and in the it's sort of the same way with government. Government, uh, you know, uh, the the you know the people who are electing these people into government aren't being held responsible for mm-hmm. their actions. You know, the people who are. Well, the people making the uh, choice at the ballot box aren't responsible. Well, in a way, they're, they are though. They're they're not really. But they're not. You're not. They're just people po- should be saying that if you are supporting a, a, a politician signing in something into law, you are a violent person. You're not being held responsible for being a violent person, but you're a violent person. If you support a ban on something, if you support licensing something, then what you're supporting is men with guns going and hurting people to you're just make harassing. sure- You're just harassing people, Johnson. <laughs> Stop threatening and intimidating people. Right, exactly. This right? is what I've been uh, accused of for saying basically the same thing to parking enforcers. Like, right. hey, you're threatening people. People, you're hurting people. I'm, I'm just doing my job. So it's um, like what? Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from, and it, it really is an attack on free speech. If you look at the uh, the Reason.com situation, right, where there were commenters on Reason's website who had commented some things about the judge in the Ross Ulbricht case, and now the federal government came after Reason and said, uh, you need to hand over information about your site's users to us right. or else. And then they further put them on a gag order to where they were not able to reveal until a couple weeks later that this investigation was going on. And and that's a really scary kind of precedent for chilling free speech here in America. And we're going to talk in a little bit about uh, free speech being restricted in New Zealand where apparently trolling has now been made illegal, but I think this all ties in together. Well, you know, actually, beyond that, part of uh, what was in my mind here is not just this ruling in New Zealand, but also what's going on in uh, Europe and what what may be coming to the United States is this whole uh, right to be forgotten. Oh, yeah, where Google, uh, you can order Google to remove certain search results. Right. I mean, talk about a chill on free speech. I mean, yeah. it's essentially, you know, like, oh, if you do something and someone else reveals it and then you can just make all the history of everything go away about your i mean it's just it's crazy and what i think what i would hope and i hope that google does this and i hope other search engines do this that if there's a right to be re- request uh, a right to be forgotten request that's filed like let's say a company um, files a right to be forgotten request or a politician or something like that what the what the company who's having this right to be forgotten request should do is carpet bomb so, like, let's say a politician says, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Romney or, uh, you know, whoever says, well, this instant or, or actually better example, Santorum. Okay. Because Santorum, if you Google Santorum, you're going to get all sorts of fun results. Yeah. But uh, so let's say Santorum says, well, I don't want this about me on the Internet. Right to be forgotten. I'm filing right to be forgotten request. What they should do is just carpet bomb his website. Everything Who's about they? they being like Google. You know, whoever's responsible for having to actually enact this do not uh, or this right to be forgotten request. And what do you how do you describe carpet bombing? Yeah, his so carpet what bombing, mean? what I'm saying is that don't just cherry pick and laser out exactly what needs to be forgotten. According to this person, mm-hmm. remove everything about them. You so, have you have. Oh, your personal <laughs> website. Oh, you're a politician. Well, guess what? You're not in the search results at all. All or anymore. nothing. All or nothing. You're gone. Yeah. yeah. You That's filed. You not. Re- you know, if right to be forgotten request. Bye bye. You vanish from the internet. Uh, unfortunately. It appears that Google is just complying rather than doing what you're suggesting. Actually, I think I've heard otherwise. Really? Actually. Okay. I would like to know more about that. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. More from Ross Ulbricht coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. 
This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. People love photography, but when we thought about photography, we realized one thing. Humans are limited to looking at photos with our eyes. That's a problem, right? So we made an app, Pixong, the first program that turns your photos into music if you want to do that for some reason. It puts the power in your hands. You get to decide why you need this. I can't tell you why you need this. It's not my job. Who is this app for? Maybe it's for students, or artists, or blind people. But can it turn your music into photos? No, it can't. Do you get to keep the original photo? No, it gets deleted. Always back up your photos before using PicSong. This is the Onion News Network. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. We're here at Free Talk Live. You can join us on the radio waves at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, it's me, Ian. And Johnson. And Danica. And hey, you can join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. If you have not yet done so, do send a contact request over. We'll approve it as soon as, uh, as, soon as I notice it come in. And then after it's approved, you're good to go to call us on Skype. And that usually means you're going to sound better. Uh, that way too. So Skype usernames lrn.fm. If you've got comments on Ross Ulbricht, he apparently sent a letter to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I was only able to catch a portion of his mom's speech. Uh, Lynn Ulbricht, she attended Porkfest again this year. She was there last year and again uh, then this year. And there was a thread on Facebook where people are saying that they didn't know how to approach her. They didn't know like what to say to Lynn Ulbricht, who is again this mom of Ross, and obviously she's distraught over what has sure, happened yeah. with her son, and so I guess people were having trouble kind of knowing how to really approach that and and be empathetic because it's 
it's hard to I, it would be hard to put oneself in in those shoes, right? I mean, unless you've actually gone through losing a loved one to the prison system for a period of time, you probably don't exactly know right. what that feeling Unf- is like. Unfortunately, I know exactly how I would have approached her at Porkfest had she had I been able to. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, my approach would have been, "Would you like some bulgogi?" <laughs> <laughs> on the house? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I know, okay. On the house. <laughs> yeah, you guys were cooking at the uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival and a lot of people were raving about y'all's bulgogi. I don't know if you heard Korean the barbecue rumors. beef for anyone who doesn't know what bulgogi. Yeah. Is. It smelled yes. great and you were one of the last Last, uh, last booth standing that actually had food on the final day. That's so. right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, w- I was pretty surprised by that. Then it was like, everybody, they've run out of food, they've run out of food. I'm like, it's what? Saturday more, you know, morning, yeah, Saturday, yeah. Morning. Yeah, Saturday morning. morning. I'm like, it's Saturday morning, there's an entire day left, and there's a grocery store just down the road. And I had just gotten back from the grocery store. I'm like, okay, well, I've got prep to do. You know, and I'm yeah. cutting up meat and stuff like that. I'm like, what? What are you doing? Like, why are you running out of food on Saturday morning? It's like, pork lot, fest was great. Yeah, I mean, it, like the last day uh, is normally when people are selling out of food, but I, I guess it was, it was probably a smart thing that people were running out of food on Saturday because you don't want to have too much. Well, you don't want to be necessarily selling on Sunday, and it would have been very difficult to sell this particular Sunday because it was raining. And, and it was raining, raining it was hard, pouring. <laughs> and we had to tear down our tent in the rain. In the rain. Oh, you know, it was really unbelievable. Well, it, it would have been fun to have Ross there. I mean, he's yeah. never been to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. The uh, The letter here that he has written to Porkfest is now being, it has been released at freeross.org, and it's been picked up by a number of tech websites. This one from Ars Technica. Uh, I'm going to continue here. He says that he's hoping that he can get a new trial or have the case dismissed altogether based on some of the newly revealed corruption amongst the DEA and Secret Service officers in this case. There have now been two officers that have pleaded guilty to felony charges of corruption. Anyway, going on here, he writes, In many ways, my struggle is just getting started now that it's going to the higher courts, so I still need your help. Mounting an effective appeal is not easy. I'm confident in my team, but there's only so much we can do without your donations. What we can be sure of is that the government will spend as many of your tax dollars as is needed to keep me behind bars, so please help however you can. I hope my story has shed light on some of the issues we face these days. There are many, but please don't let what's happened to me lead you to despair. Keep standing for liberty and respect for our rights. Keep fighting for your freedom, and eventually we will win. Cheers from Ross. So a, a very uh, sort of uplifting piece of mail from a man who... Ever optimistic. Yeah, he is obviously very optimistic. And, I mean, really, you got nothing to lose at this point. He's lost it all. He's in federal prison with a life sentence with no possibility of parole. And I think it's important to reiterate this. He's in there for running a website. He, yes, okay, maybe he sold some mushrooms. He might have sold some mushrooms on the site early in the day. Or early in the the whole uh, the day of the the, the, the time yeah of the first the days existence of the site yeah early in its days, and uh, and that's it you know he he's not some sort of drug kingpin yeah he probably collected a fee on every single item that was listed on the website but there were items that were listed on the site that were legal as well you could buy shipping supplies for instance through uh, the Silk Road. And so here's the thing that a lot of people have said so. I know I'm repeating this, but we don't see the creator of Craigslist in prison for yeah. all of those murders that have happened as a result of people meeting up on Craigslist. Oh, man. I've heard about that. Yeah. I mean, How I, many of those have there been? I don't think there's been that many, but there okay. has been. I mean, there's been at least, I want to say two or three somebody's gotten killed somebody's and somebody's gotten probably killed. gotten robbed probably somebody's a lot of people robbed. Been robbed. Um, people have gotten hurt i'm sure people have been screwed over i mean i i did a very dumb thing back that i need to craigslist to get a roommate and don't do that do a background check you're doing that but that's a story for another time Should well, the what about craigs- the, all the gun and drug running that the cia has been doing well, they're the government, so they're exempt. Well, that's what I'm saying. We don't see the creator of Craigslist in prison. Right. Should the Craigslist guy be charged with pimping? 
I mean, because there's also but people that, that are putting ever adult came ads up on in any in any of these trials that happen to do with the Craigslist killer or anything like that. Never once did the creator of the Craigslist come it, up. We should charge him. Well, with and of the course, crime. I suppose. I guess my point here about bringing up the CIA is that I don't want to be giving them any more ideas about other private websites in terms of things like Craigslist. I think that you know, rather than suggesting that you know, hey, why aren't these other websites being held responsible? My idea here is why aren't the government organizations being held responsible? responsible for doing as much or worse than what happened on the Silk Road. Because governments directly, government organizations that are supposed to be responsible directly for preventing drugs and guns and sure. violence supposedly have been the ones who have been responsible for running the guns or, and uh, selling the drugs and causing massive amounts of violence yeah, obviously and stealing no, money from people. None of us want to see the Craigslist founder go to jail, right? Sure. Like you weren't suggesting that he should go to jail. Just right, yeah. It's inconsistent. It's completely inconsistent. But you know how someone, some bureaucratic politician would interpret hearing anything about talking about like, what? These things are happening? We need to prosecute exactly like we prose- you know, prosecuted Ross Ulbrich. And we need to hold all these websites accountable. Let's get Zuckerberg for every you know, uh, supposed child uh, I- I- abduction incident that's happened on Facebook. <laughs> Let's get everyone. Let's get Elon Musk because he had a stake in PayPal once. And we all know how much PayPal has screwed over We all know how people. dangerous the internet is. Every website creator <laughs> should be arrested because the internet is the devil. Well, obviously you You've gone a little bit crazy there, but, you know, a little hyperbolic. But nonetheless, it's not unreasonable to think that this is going to get worse, that they've gone after Ross Ulbricht. They've convicted him for this and for essentially coding. uh, Right. I mean, when you're coding, this is speech, is it not? I mean, if you're typing things into a computer and you're saving a file, you've just spoken into that file. Right. That's that's by definition should be freedom of speech. And so computer code should have freedom of speech protections. But in this case, the government didn't like the reason why this website existed, which, of course, was to give people access to a free marketplace where you could sell almost anything. Now, there were certain things that were prohibited. You could not sell poison. You could not sell child pornography. And you could not sell weapons on the Silk Road. I believe those were the three things that there may have been more, but those are three big ones. And so it wasn't a totally open marketplace, but you can't sell weapons grade plutonium. <laughs> the, uh, like, the you know the gold. I'm just thinking like what kind of random thing. I mean, it's, uh, that's a weird list. Just in my mind, it's just why a is weird... it so weird? I mean, not I don't know. Most people just... don't like the idea of child pornography, and sure, certainly no, people don't want poison, po- okay. people to be poisoned and still, further. Yeah. Uh, what was the third thing? Child porn, poison, weapons. weapons, weapons yeah, and right. actually, you know, they actually did try to do weapons for. Uh, on a different site. They had the Armory, right. which didn't really go anywhere. It didn't work out. Hardly anybody was selling anything on it, so they shut it down. Of course not, because you can get the weapons. These are all computer geeks, and you can get your weapons for free by 3D printing them. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> Although I think when uh, when the Silk Road opened, that didn't exist, right? Silk Road started in 2011. Oh, I think you might be right. And yeah. I don't think the 3D printed gun came out until 2012 or 2013. I think 2013, actually. Yeah, 2013, yeah. because I remember uh, seeing some 3D printed stuff at Porkfest and... 2013. Right. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Let's talk more about freedom of speech. There's a crackdown coming apparently on trolls in New Zealand. Johnson has the story, and this really strikes at home for Johnson because he's done a little bit of trolling this time. (laughs) There's more on the way here. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. You, me, and BTC is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. We're sitting down with Mr. Jason King. If you want to f*** with the government, (laughs) feed homeless people, man. Jeffrey Tucker, what's possible in the Bitcoin space? Sounds a little like science fiction, but if you wait enough time, it becomes a reality. Angela Keaton from Antiwar.com. This is what the United States does. involves killer robots. For Bitcoiners, this is a way to get around that. Subscribe at you, me, and BTC.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. 
There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to OneSilverSolution.com. OneSilverSolution.com. There is only one silver solution. All right, so suddenly Walmart, eBay, Amazon, everybody wants to ban the rebel flag. Well, the rebel flag is an important part of American history. The rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of Southern pride and Southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. Go to ourflags.com. That's R, like rebel, R, the letter R, ourflags.com. Get your rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? Ourflags.com. That's ourflags.com. Go now. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Time for you if you want to join us here. We've got plenty of it. 855-450 free. You don't have to talk about Ross Ulbricht and his case, which is... On the slow road to appeals court, uh, not sure when it's going to get its first hearing. Obviously, as we know more, we will inform you here. I should mention this, though. Uh, did mention it previously. We were reading a letter from Ross Ulbricht, who's the founder of the Silk Road. He's now sentenced to life in prison for it, uh, that he is asking for help. If you would like to assist, you can contribute to his legal fund at freeross.org. That's where you can go to chip in via Bitcoin, and I think they'll take check and PayPal as well. So freeross.org, they are looking to raise a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, they've already raised like 300-something thousand, but they're looking to raise 600,000. So they're about halfway to their goal, and it's a long way to get to $600,000 oh, yeah. uh, in, in funding. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I can't say I'm particularly happy with his legal team, but he says he is. You know, in his letter to the Porcupine Freedom Festival, he says he really likes his legal team. And I don't think it was the right choice on their part to admit in their opening statement that he created the Silk Road. Yeah. I think that was probably a really poor approach. But, you know, that's just me. I'm not a legal expert. Who knows what their strategy was? Maybe that strategy would have worked had they been allowed to actually present their case. But, of course, the judge in the case basically neutered their case, prevented them from truly being able to even call the witnesses they wanted to call. They were prevented from calling Andreas Antonopoulos, who we've had on this show. He's like a Bitcoin guru guy. Mm -hmm. He's really great. 
at explaining Bitcoin to new people, to people who have never heard of the idea before this decentralized currency that you know is not issued by any state or or any uh, bank, for instance. Andreas Antonopoulos is uh, a brilliant Bitcoin communicator, and he was prohibited from testifying at the trial by the the judge, Judge Forrest, in this particular case. So there's a lot that was wrong with the Ross Ulbricht trial, and maybe he's actually got a shot at getting a retrial. I sure hope so. But at the same time, it's hard to get your hopes up with the federal court system because you are bound to be disappointed at some point. So we were starting to talk about the chilling effect on freedom of speech here that not only is indicated by the Ross Ulbricht conviction, the fact that a man who programmed and ran a website is guilty of federal crimes because of what was done with the website. Now, certainly you could say he knew what was going on with the site. I mean, you don't just, he didn't just put the site up and then leave it there and walk away from it. He was an active administrator. He was, uh, if you're an administrator on the Silk Road, you had certain responsibilities sure. like dealing with customer disputes. Customer says, hey, so and so didn't send me the product, or the, you know, the vendor says, yes, I did. And then, you know, you kind of have to <laughs> mediate that uh, to some extent. So, you know, that's one of the things he was uh, one, likely doing as administrator. And, of course, he was uh, working with the other administrators on the site as well uh, to make sure they were doing their jobs and all that. So it wasn't like he was hands off. But all that said, I mean, to, to send someone to prison for life, they really obviously were trying to so-called send a message uh, to other people with this case. Like, ah, see what happens when you run your own website without, uh, you know, this illegal concept. We're going to put you your nose to the grindstone, uh, stone, so to speak, here, and punish you to the maximum. So it's really tragic. And again, you can follow the latest over at freeross.org. So Johnson, you've got a story from New Zealand where apparently they have made trolling illegal. That's true. I touched on the story a couple of weeks ago uh, with Mark, just a bit. And you know, as it as it is, we we're doing it at the end of the show, and. Uh, you know, it gets busy. Yep. So we didn't actually finish it. So uh, I want to definitely uh, uh, jump back into the story because I think it's huge and uh, scary because of how these governments like to copycat each other. All right. So New Zealand is now the most recent country to censor f free speech on the inter internet, preventing Tumblr trolls and cyber bullies from being jerks to people online. The country passed a bill called the Harmful Digital Communications Bill in hopes of abetting cyberbullying. The bill would censor posts that are racist, sexist, show oh, wow. religious intolerance, or hassle people about disability or sexual orientation. So basically, oh. they're banning 70% of the internet here. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty a, much. Yeah. That's a lot of the content yeah. on the internet. Yeah. The bill states that any online post that creates serious emotional distress... That's not subjective at all. Oh, my. Uh, and is subjected to negotiation, mediation, or persuasion, but continues and creates the offenses of not complying with an order and causing harm by posting digital communication is deemed criminal. So basically, if someone calls you a ham planet on Facebook and you ask them to stop, but they, and instead, they, don't. they instead post a meme with ham planet across your fat rolls, mm -hmm. litigation is now permissible. Wow, Haters this is no about as bad hate. as it can be. Yeah. Wow. Um, the bill also includes an offense for incitement to suicide, the most serious offense, which would result in the in years of jail for the offender. Now, we've seen this in the United States. They have yeah. uh, these so-called cyberbullying laws that were created in the, the wake of, I think it was like a 13-year-old mm -hmm. took her own life after ostensibly being harassed by, I believe in this yeah. the case that I'm recalling, was actually a mother who was masquerading as though she were a teenager in the girl's class. Yeah, and I was that too. basically a, It wasn't her own mother. It was a different mom, and that mom was essentially harassing this young right. lady online, and she uh, took the wrong road out. But uh, they passed these cyberbullying laws, which I'm not a huge fan of. I mean, look, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I don't like the idea of uh, bullying. I certainly don't support that. But at the same time, it is the internet. You can turn it off. It's not the same thing. Right. It's not the same thing as having somebody like push you and demand your lunch money or right. throw you in a garbage can or something like that. It's not like every service on the planet has a block function. Well, yeah, I am just thinking in like the very extreme cases where these kids often may get stalked or the teasing and the trolling comes from the internet straight to their own schools. Now, realize this, that 
when they get trolled online, sometimes it won't follow them to school. But maybe they're going to, maybe the kids that are harassing them on Tumblr are also going to harass them at school too because there's local kids. Well, now criminal harassment is right. where you will not stop uh, messing with somebody when they ask you to. Right. So in theory, you could go after somebody for criminal harassment charges if sure, they absolutely. are sending communications directly to you. So uh, if, okay, so let's say that you're getting, somebody's bothering you on the internet and you say, hey, stop that. I don't want to ever hear from you again. And that person continues, that would likely meet the definition of criminal harassment. However, if the person posts to their own profile, oh, that Danica, she's a such and such, uh, you <laughs> right. know. Well, I don't then, have to follow that person. I can right. block them and That actually whatever. sounds like kind of like what this law is saying, so maybe this is a non-issue because it does say the bill states that any online post that creates serious emotional distress, distress and is subjected to negotiation, mediation, or persuasion, but continues and creates the offense of, of not complying with an order and causing harm by posting digital communication communication is deemed criminal. So it sounds like if somebody is blocked or asked request to stop and then continues that that's when this becomes Right. If they're criminal. posting on their own Tumblr and this troll is just harasses them and won't stop and then they block them and then the troll finds another way to create another profile, then then it's getting really serious. So I've got a little bit more detail about yeah, this. Sure. Is interesting. So we talked about the suicide, uh, sort of the incitement to suicide one. But what about the non, just the regular uh, offense for this? What What's the punishment for that? Well, other cyber bullies could face two years in jail. What? Or a maximum fine of 50,000 New Zealand currency, which equates to about $33,900 U.S. Whoa. for harassing posts. Wow. Okay, so just to, to clarify, the, the beginning of what is illegal, can you read the very beginning of it again? Sure, the, sure, sir. You want me to read this? Uh, what, the definition of the what is outlawed. Sure. The bill states that any online post that creates serious emotional distress. Uh, see, that's the problem, I think. Yeah, that's crazy. Any online post, right. that's where it's different from a post directed at someone, meaning that like you have sent me a message directly right. versus you're just posting on your own profile. Right. right. You should be able to get on your own profile and say, Ian is a poopy head <laughs> if you right, want right. to. Um, whereas if you send me that message and I tell you to stop and right. then you continue, that's sort of the definition of criminal yeah. harassment. Yeah. So but, this is any but online freedom post. of speech should be able, you know, you should be able to say what you want in your own arena, in your own Correct. property. And then, if if some, and then if someone is bugging you to say, Hey, stop. And if they don't stop, you can just say, okay, blocked or removed yeah. or something. And that person cannot post on your profile. So not anymore. only, not only does that post have to create serious emotional distress, but it also must be subjected to negotiation, mediation, or persuasion, whatever that means. Well, I think that means that the person is trying to stop you, right? Like trying yes. to say, hey, well, you please could probably get like a mod or someone from, let's use Tumblr, yeah. for example. You can get a mod from Tumblr and say, hey, this person is harassing me. And then the moderator attempts to talk to the troll, and the troll still doesn't try and. Does that ever work? Act. No, no, no. I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying that's probably what they're talking about. I mean, does, does arguing or try right? I mean, but that, what they're saying is here: the first post isn't the illegal one. You know, when you send the first right, insulting it's message, ones. it's after you say, "Hey, stop that," or you know, you try to negotiate, "Leave me alone," or right. "I would appreciate you not doing that." So anymore. the rest of it is: if you don't comply and it causes harm by posting digital communication, that's what makes it criminal. If you're Scary not, stuff. Not in compliance with but, the order. By the way, New Zealand uh, does not have a constitution. I don't know if you knew that. Oh. Nice. So they can kind of just do whatever they want there, and there's no governing document whatsoever. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shackettes. Reminding you that anytime. Anytime. Is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of gold bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded elevator ride. Or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting. You said it, ladies. Stay cool with gold bond powder spray. Stay cool with gold bond. <laughs> So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. 
Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 9th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.36 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,162 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $272. Antiwar.com reports Yemen's Hadi government in exile, backed by ongoing Saudi attacks on the country, aiming to reinstall them, yesterday informed the United Nations that they are open to a conditional truce that would end the war, issuing a series of demands. The Hadi offer, according to a spokesman, was to back an end to the Saudi attacks on Yemen in return for the Shiite Houthis agreeing to cede them four provinces. None of the provinces were specified and were only said to be in the east and south of the country. That's not all they want, however, as Hadi is demanding a release of several prisoners held by the Houthis, including their defense minister and some other top officials. The UN confirmed receipt of the truce offer. There has been no formal response by the Houthis, however, and they're probably not going to agree to give up four provinces of the country to the Hadi faction in return for a truce. The Houthis have sought an agreement on a transition to an elected government, something the Hadi government opposes. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a judge on Tuesday ordered Time Warner Cable to pay a Texas woman $229,500 for harassing her with 163 robocalls meant for another customer. U.S. District Judge Alvin Hellerstein in Manhattan said the cable company went too far when it continued making robocalls to Araceli King of Irving, Texas, 153 of them after she told the company that they had the wrong number. After getting 10 phone calls from the company, between July and October 2013, King had a seven-minute conversation with a Time Warner representative telling them the customer they were trying to call, Louise Perez, did not have the mobile phone number she has. The phone number had been assigned to her by Sprint after Perez had used it. Time Warner called King 153 more times, including 74 phone calls that came after King filed a lawsuit in March 2014. Hellerstein said Time Warner Cable's actions were particularly egregious and said that the company did not take the lawsuit seriously, so he tripled the penalty to $1,500 per phone call. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Baltimore Police Commissioner Anthony Batts was fired on Wednesday following criticism of his handling of rioting over the death of a man from an injury in police custody and a skyrocketing homicide rate. 
Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake said the focus on bats and the leadership of the 2500 officer force had become a distraction in fighting resurgent crime and was hurting her goal of attracting families to the city. She told a City Hall news conference, as we have seen in recent weeks, many continue to die. Families are tired of feeling the pain, and so am I. Bats, who came to Baltimore from California in September 2012, had a reputation as a reformer and will be replaced on an interim basis by Deputy Commissioner Kevin Davis. Bats came under fire for his handling of rioting following the funeral of Freddie Gray on April 27th. Gray died after suffering an injury while being transported in a police van, heightening a national debate on police treatment of minorities. Six officers have been charged in his death. Bats and other commanders told officers to hold the line with rioters rather than confront people causing damage or threatening police. His cautious response was seen as an improvement over other cities, such as Ferguson, Missouri, that had used heavy-handed tactics to shut down protests after complaints of police brutality. But Bats came under criticism for not being better prepared for the rioting. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new Gallup poll found that the GOP has an overwhelming advantage among young people who look like old men. The poll shows Republicans hold a solid lead among the coveted elderly youth demographic, including 18 to 24 year olds who wear suspenders and bow ties to class every day. I'm joined by Republican strategist Rob Powell. These are pretty encouraging numbers for the GOP, aren't they? Yeah, of course, it's very encouraging. Millennials who look like they're permanently dressed for boat trips are a rapidly growing segment of the population. And according to the survey, the prematurely aged are are also very politically active. Absolutely. Only about 20% of young people vote overall, but there's almost 100% turnout among youth that dress like a dad from a 1950s sitcom. Now, what about the criticism that the GOP only appeals to white men? Not true. We also have a lot of support among sorority girls that wear pantsuits and pearls, paunchy Chinese college students, and we're making inroads among African-American ham radio enthusiasts. This is the Onion News Network. Now with more Free Talk Live. We got time for you if you want to join us here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've talked about the Silk Road, and the most recent development is that Ross Ulbricht, the founder of the Silk Road, the underground infamous drug marketplace, is now sitting in prison for the rest of his life, uh, though he is appealing. He has written a letter to the Porcupine Freedom Festival, which is the very same festival that uh, you guys and I just uh, came back from. I'm Ian, by the way. And Johnson. And Danica. Uh, so uh, the Pork Fest is a wonderful week-long camping festival that happens in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. It's just a beautiful location with uh, over 1,000 people attending in the, in the recent years. I think there were at least 1,300 attendees this year. We would have loved to have Ross there in person. He unfortunately is in prison. His mom, though, came out, Lynn Ulbricht. She's been at this year's Pork Fest. She was at last year's Pork Fest. She was at the Liberty Forum. She actually joined the Free State Project. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. Oh, but very cool. Yeah, That's it was awesome. It was actually at the first Porcupine Freedom Festival is where Lynn, Ross's mom, joined the Free State Project. And, of course, it's also worth mentioning that one of the administrators of the Silk Road, uh, who is known as Libertas, mm-hmm. Is the uh, is another uh, Free State Project participant? Awesome. <laughs> so very cool. And actually, I don't know what's going on in his case. Last I heard, his sentencing is set for October. So how many years in prison he'll be receiving? Uh, I don't know. See, I wonder if all this additional exposure, like there's exposure from this letter from Ross to Porkfest to Bitcoin people, and it seems like Bitcoin is a pretty wide phenomena. And I don't know what the sort of Venn diagram of people who are really into Bitcoin versus people who are really into Liberty and Freedom style events like Porkfest, like what does that crossover look like and how much additional uh, publicity is Porkfest getting from this exposure from Ross and exposure from Bitcoin in general sort of... I would say it's getting quite a bit. I mean, Porkfest is sort of like the biggest Bitcoin event now. Yeah, right? but it's still I mean, not that. I mean, but it's still not okay. So yeah, it's known in Bitcoin circles. Right. That's that's true. 
Uh, but there's still a lot of people who don't know what the Free, Free State Project is. They don't know sure. what Porkfest is. A lot of people don't know what Bitcoin exactly. is. Exactly. So. so I'm what I'm saying is that there's a lot of additional uh, a lot of additional sort of publicity that's going on here, and I wonder is this going to have an impact on sort of uh, Porkfest and potentially the is Free the State Ross Project? Is the Ross Ulbricht letter? Are we going to get not just the Ross Ulbricht letter, but this kind of exposure of Pork Fest and the Free State Project amongst the Bitcoin community, are we going to start seeing a lot more tech-savvy Bitcoin kind of people that are going to be exposed and therefore, you know, is this going to have a sort of a, a, a tech bump on uh, well, it's already a pretty State techie project. movement, right? Exactly, it's already a pretty. So, techie how would movement. you tell? I guess I you know. How, yeah, exactly. Most free staters, <laughs> uh, look, most of the people that are early movers for the Free State Project are tech savvy. They're either sure. tech savvy or they're actually in the tech field. They're actually working in IT. There or are some that are more tech savvy than others. I mean, you have a lot of people who are basic level programmers. You know, they do a little dabbling, a little coding, but in the Bitcoin realm, there are some people that are like. You I'll talk just, to them, it's like, okay, brilliant. oh my God, you know, yeah. Yeah, like they're, they're way over your head. Google founder kind of type people, you know. Right. There's a huge difference between like your average level. So are you asking I'm how many them. average techies are going to be attracted or how many like total genius uh, right. I'm wondering. I'm just, people? Well, I'm not even asking for numbers. I'm just sort of wondering like, is there going to be some kind of a bump? Are we going well, to start getting hurt. some like crazy tech luminaries that are going to really start? Bruce of course Fenton it can't hurt. Bruce Fenton is like in charge of the Bitcoin, what is it, the uh, foundation, the Bitcoin right. foundation. He's. Uh, the head boss man over there now right and so he's got a big name and he's moving to new hampshire as part of the free state project yep. so i guess the answer is probably yes i mean when I you mean, go this, to these Bitcoin i'm just saying like this kind of thing could have major major impacts i mean this is not just a small thing if if we start seeing this huge free state project tech bump and suddenly lots yeah. more tech people who are interested in freedom and interested in things like Bitcoin start moving to New Hampshire, and New Hampshire starts becoming a lot more techie. That's awesome. You, you start seeing the Silicon Valley of the Northeast start forming. I mean, That would be that, nice. And then oh, cool. money starts flowing. Maybe we can There's get some, some fiber pretty internet. huge, you know, <laughs> butterfly wing flapping consequences yeah, that can spin off from this. You well, know, that's just it. Ripples you see, in the pond. You never know uh, what one type of outreach is going to result in right so uh, derek J, who's our monday night co-host co-host of uh, freedom freedom fiends and uh and flaming freedom he was at the new movers party this week now for those that don't know we're here in new hampshire all of us because of the free state project it's a movement of uh, trying to get twenty thousand liberty-minded people to converge on new hampshire we've got almost seventeen thousand people who've pledged to make the move to new hampshire as part of the free state project so the the fsp has yet to reach its ultimate goal of twenty thousand so even though it hasn't made that goal there are still people who've been moving early like all of us have done we mm -hmm. were early movers and so even the people that moved last week are still early movers. As long as that 20,000 number hasn't been hit, we're still in that early mover phase. I was told there were a dozen people at this uh, this month's new movers party, and there was like a dozen last month. So we're talking about several people right. every week moving on the radar. There are other people yeah, who off, will move on the radar. under the radar who won't show up at a new movers party. So, you know, we know of at least 12 in the last month who have moved to the Manchester region or whatever, and they showed up at the party. Derek J says one of the movers specifically stopped him and talked to him and said, thank you, I was brought into this by Derek J's victimless crime spree, which is the movie that I helped uh, produce. I was the executive producer of the film. Derek J was the uh, director, and another free stater, Bo Davis, was the editor. We put this thing together for you know next to nothing. Essentially, it cost a couple thousand mm -hmm. bucks for the editing equipment and whatever. And uh, and it's it's resulted that one piece of media has resulted in multiple people coming here citing that as their reason. We're going to have other people citing, "Hey, I heard about Bitcoin at Porkfest," or you know, "I found out that you guys were big into Bitcoin, so I moved here." There's going to be a lot of people to answer your you know question. What? Yes, there will be some sort of bump. Will it all happen at once? No, probably not. But over right. the next few years, there are going to be people who are moving here because. Yeah, this seems like the Bitcoin mecca, and I'm a libertarian, so I'm coming. You know, there's an opposing form of outreach that I also like. Trolling statists until they leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has happened. <laughs> it has happened. It has. You know, uh, I think the most classic example uh, would be this lady who lived out in a town west of here, Pam Martins, I think was her name. Okay. She used to write for Counterpunch, which is a fairly prominent website out there. And she wrote a few anti-Free State Project articles, like just 
conspiracy laden right. the Koch brothers are funding okay. everything oh. you know that kind of right. article this fear mongering stuff from more more of kind of a lefty perspective and like how George Soros is for funding Bernie Sanders I mean it's like just well, that's, ridiculous that's yeah. the similar conspiracy right, theory sure. right the 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 version it's just of like that just like slap two liberal names together yeah. and, you know like <laughs> so the version of that for the free state project is that uh it's the Koch brothers who are funding the free state project and they're right. paying for all of our moves to <laughs> through New the Hampshire. ridiculous the, like you know well the, the 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 start of that is because uh Jason Sorens was originally part of he went to school or he taught at um the some government Yale or something not Yale he went to Yale I think there was a the Mercatus Center he's oh. still with the Mercatus Center. Mer- Mercatus Center the Mercatus mm-hmm. Center supposedly has received a donation at some point by the Koch brothers we've had that's yeah, like uh, ridiculous so like f- obviously the whole Free State Project well I mean there, there <laughs> are some people involved with the Free State Project you know there's 1700 right. of them who are here now so a handful of them are involved with projects that Koch's the Koch brothers are funding so right. I mean it's not like the Koch brothers haven't sent some money to sure. some people who are related to the Free State Project. But, but there to are also suggest Democratic that, Free State Project members yeah. as well. So but, but you could just as easily the, suggest that George Soros is or some you know you could. liberal donor who is like big into don, you know donating. But that doesn't causes. serve the agenda of the people <laughs> no, who are writing these not. these articles. They're ridiculous. But Pam Martin's to go back to the example. She wrote these a, a Free State Project attack articles, basically. And I publish them over at freekeen.com. So if you actually go and search for Pam Martins, and I think there might be two A's in Martins, if I'm recalling correctly, but either way, uh, you can find her. So ends in an ENS, not an INS, as I recall. Yeah, I think you're right about that. So she's gone. Yeah. Her and her husband sold their house and they left New Hampshire. Good wow. riddance. Goodbye. And hopefully that will happen to more people who hate the ideas of freedom. And there are enough, there are plenty of those people in New Hampshire, but there's more of them in other states. 855 450 free and the more freedom lovers we can get here, the more frustrating it will be to be someone who loves the state, to be someone who appreciates the status quo. It'll be more and more uncomfortable for those folks here and I think that's a good thing. 855 450 free. We'll come back with more free talk live in moments. Are you suffering with hearing loss? Are you sick of people constantly complaining that your TV is too loud? Are you tired of asking people to speak up? Would you like to hear more clearly, but you don't want to wear a hearing aid that makes you look old? Then you need to try Listen Clear, a life-changing breakthrough precisely designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. And you can adjust Listen Clear to find the perfect way to hear everything, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And now we're extending our in-home trial to let you try Listen Clear risk-free for a full 45 days with free shipping. We'll even give you free batteries for life. Call now, 1-800-956-9829. Listen Clear is lightweight and completely hassle-free, and it's practically invisible. Call for your extended 45-day in-home trial with free shipping and free batteries for life. For free information, call now, 1-800-956-9829. That's 1-800-956-9829. 1-800-956-9829. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's 
the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to play online poker with Bitcoin, you need a site that's trustworthy and technically sound. The site managers of SWCPoker.eu have proven their commitment to bringing you great gameplay from a site you can trust, SWCPoker.eu. They have lots of new games too, including Chinese poker, and their Krill leaderboard is open right now. It's a beautiful site, easy to use with lots of players. Go on over to SWCPoker.eu now and have some fun with your Bitcoin, SWCPoker.eu. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here at 855-450-FREE. If you like, you can also join us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm and do you want to reach people with the ideas of liberty you can do it from the back of your car with libertystickers.com you can reach thousands of people with one bumper sticker and you know that people love to read them check out the vast selection of witty poignant pithy and downright bombastic liberty oriented messages at libertystickers.com they'll also do custom orders as well so if there's something you've always wanted to put on a bumper sticker you can do that through the folks over at LibertyStickers.com. Cool. I always like that spot because it's attention grabbing where it's like, you know, you want to reach out to people with liberty, you can do it from the back of your car. It's like, you want some liberty? <laughs> like, <laughs> Check, out some liberty, liberty yeah. Check out my liberty. Check out my I've got some liberty. Yeah, I like that, liberty. All right. some of that. LibertyStickers.com. <laughs> Go there. They got great bumper stickers, really, and really creative stuff in a lot of different kind of categories. What's your favorite sticker, Ian? My favorite made. bumper sticker? Yeah, that they've, that they've made. <laughs> um, I couldn't tell you. I haven't looked through their entire cat catalog. Don't steal. The government hates competition. Is that is that an original from, from them? I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but, you know, everybody's got their own preferences. So go and see it for yourself. LibertyStickers.com. I've got, um, let's see, I'm trying to think if I have... Well, the free uh, the free talk live and LRN.FM stickers are made by the people who make LibertyStickers.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I like those. How about that? We also have an, you also have an onion bumper sticker, which I think is that pretty... That is not Liberty stickers. I know it's not, yeah. but it's pretty cool. But if you go to any Liberty event, like if you go to Liberty Forum or Porkfest, you will see like hundreds of these stickers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's so, like, you know you're at a Liberty event when you look around and like you get to the parking lot and you're like, oh, it's like library here. <laughs> so let's uh, get back to your story, Johnson. For those of you just tuning in, it is very disturbing. Yes. Out of New Zealand, where, by the way, there is no constitution. I mentioned this in the last hour. Right. New Zealand, I, I was researching New Zealand actually years ago, and I was looking at, well, what are the other countries in the world that might be liberty friendly or possible places to move for somebody who cares about freedom? And New Zealand kind of came up on the radar as one of the, uh, the lesser governmental places. It's in the top 10 countries, the freest nations of the world. It's usually higher ranked on those charts than the United States. But there's also no constitution there. And certainly you can argue that the constitution in the U.S. hasn't done much to slow the mm -hmm. growth of the state here. Uh, but on the other hand, you could certainly point to examples of how the constitution, to some extent, has at least they have to sort of pretend to obey it. They have to may pay at the very least lip service to the constitution. Apparently in New Zealand, anybody that gets elected there, if there's enough of them in, in the seats of power, they can just go ahead and change things however they want to so you could see mm. that as a good thing in some ways mm. like if you got elected and you wanted to repeal certain governments 
things, maybe it would be more possible in New Zealand. But on the other hand, if somebody gets elected and they want to put in more statism programs, then there's nothing standing in the way of that. Sounds a bit Unleash like a mess the Kiwis. To me. <laughs> I got to agree with, uh, um, you know, uh, Michael Badnarik about the Constitution, at least being the purpose of it being that it's like a fireplace, it, you know keeps the government in its place you know but it hasn't right i mean like you can still you can still make the argument that if you build a hot enough fire the fire is getting out of the fireplace it'll still burn your house down but but even in new zealand part, without it, a constitution they have more economic freedom than the united oh, states okay fair enough now social freedoms are another question right so these economic freedom indexes do don't really take into account social freedoms right. and s- freedom of speech is definitely a social freedom not necessarily an economic freedom so that's what we're talking about here, yeah. where in New Zealand, they now, apparently this law has passed, yes. banning trolling, right. banning uh, posting something someone doesn't like. Go ahead and read and the appara- description again okay, for people so just tuning in. Description again, as Bill states, that any online post that creates serious emotional distress and is subjected to negotiation, mediation, or persuasion, but continues and creates offenses... Not of not complying with an order and causing harm by posting digital digital communication is deemed criminal. So again, you, if calling someone ham planet, they say stop it, and you post a ham planet meme. Suddenly, that's not only uh, possibly litigation, but it could also be that cyberbullies face up to two years in jail or a maximum fine of. $33,900 U.S. While we're at it, if we're just going to be banning uh, free speech on the internet, let's ban vague booking. I would like to get rid of that. Oh, oh yes, please. <laughs> well, I'd like to continue here about what the register kidding, has to say. The register has to say sort about of. this uh, sort of story. Um, there is a safe harbor provision for websites, and here's where the free speech arises. A platform like Facebook or Twitter, if they bothered, can opt into the safe harbor, safe harbor, but only if they agree to remove allegedly offending material, either on demand or within the bill's 48-hour grace period. The regime will be enforced by a yet-to-be-established agency that will make contra- contact with publishers. What was the safe harbor thing that they can agree to? Um... <sighs> They can opt into the safe harbor, but only if they agree to... But what does it mean when they're opting into the safe harbor? Um, they, they're they agreeing to remove allegedly offending material. Does that mean they won't be held liable? I guess, yeah. Okay, okay. Or within the... Right, so year, look, yeah. uh, we're Twitter. You're posting these offensive things here. We're agreeing to the New Zealand's uh, government's rules that we will be their their enforcer, basically. Right. We'll, we'll agree to be the enforcer of these stupid new anti-freedom of speech rules in order to protect ourselves from legal liability because right. the government will come after us. Apparently, so the regime will be enforced by a yet-to-be-established agency that will make contact with publishers and social media platforms. And if it can't resolve oh, a complaint, the agency will be able to escalate it to the district court. Here's wow. the thing that's terrifying. In oh, New it's Zealand. not terrifying enough yet? No, there's no. more? It's, there's more. The bill passed 116 to 5 what? by vote in New Zealand's parliament. But Gareth Hughes, one of the four Greens member of parliament to vote against the bill, said that it was overly broad and risks limiting... Uh, and risks limiting our freedom of expression. It's just a risk. You yeah, think? this is definitely going <laughs> to limit freedom of expression. Yeah. Now, yeah. maybe there's somebody out there listening that thinks this is a good idea. And there must be, right? You got 160 whatever state reps or whoever they are. It's all MPs. for the sake of cyberbullying. Well, I mean, right. Don't you want to keep the kids safe, Danica? I mean, I agree that cyberbullying is you know, not a nice thing to do. But, I mean, come on. You, this this isn't the answer. What is the answer? That's the thing is that I just put a block button on things. Don't like what the person's saying? Okay. Goodbye. Move on. That's just That's how it should be. Well, it seems so simple. I mean, why do they need all these laws then? Right. I mean, if, if it's so easy to block people on the internet, then what's the point of why would somebody even go to to, uh, to ask for this in the first place? Well, people get hurt very easily, I'm sure. And they want someone else to do something about it. Right? They want they want to hire the you know other people to come up and bring the ban hammer on them and stomp their feet. Well, this is more than a ban hammer. We're talking about prison, mm-hmm. right? Isn't that what we're talking ban about? Ban hammering, so. prison, And it fines, is ridiculous on the internet. All the it's feels like, are hurt. You know, you can always turn off the internet. <laughs> you know, like you don't even need to. And not only can you block people, that you don't have to interact <laughs> with them. But Johnson, shouldn't you have a right to use the internet without encountering anything offensive? You kind of do, though. You just 
turn off that person. <laughs> you know, it's like a means of communication. Yeah, but what if they you know, have it's like blocking a, a number on your telephone? What if they have a website and you just have to keep going and reading it? That's just that's because you are called. obsessed with knowing what that's that like hating is. the red owner of a restaurant and be like, I just have to go eat there. <laughs> yeah. I have to go there and spit on all the servers. I really hate Ian, but I just have to listen to Free right. Talk Live <laughs> because I live in Arizona. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> 855 450 free, 855 450. I'm not calling out anyone in specific. That, Three, seven, he certainly would be arrested in New Zealand. All right, so <laughs> we'll come back uh, with more here. And if you support this New Zealand law restricting trolling on the Internet, I want to hear from you. It's Free Talk Live. Have you ever wondered if you could make electric, light, or heat in your home for free? How about a motor that charges batteries at the same time? What if this also restores useless batteries and saves you lots of money? Come to our Renaissance Charge Conference Workshop on August 15th and 16th in Fort Lauderdale. Visit r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com for details. Or call 208-304-2954. 208-304-2954. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a block at Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. We're 
back with more Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. The Church of Cannabis has filed a lawsuit. We were critiquing the church on Monday night here on this program because it seemed like they really backed down uh, last week where they, they you know had this service that was supposed to be this historic thing where people were going to smoke cannabis, and then the leader of the church asked people not to smoke cannabis, so it just sort of fizzled. Uh, there was all this publicity and all these cops that had come out. And Anyway, they have actually now filed a suit, so they're moving ahead. And I think that's a little bit of good news. We can tell you more about that coming up here in a moment. The topic on the table for discussion right now, and of course you can bring up anything. This is Free Talk Live. That is the point of the program. You can take control of the airwaves. But I really want to hear from somebody who thinks that this law in New Zealand, which passed overwhelmingly, like five people voted against it in their parliament— and 160-something people voted for it. Is that right, right, Johnson? So this was incredibly popular from a political perspective in New Zealand. Obviously, these politicians feel like they have the support of the people. Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't do this because they wouldn't want to risk losing their next re-election. And so if there are people in New Zealand who support this, there must be people in the United States who do. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The proposal is to essentially restrict any kind of offensive posting on the internet. And just to be clear, we're not talking about someone sending you a threatening message or an annoying message or something like that. We're talking about someone posting to their own profile, someone posting to their own website, something that you don't like or someone else doesn't like, because you wouldn't do this. But uh, somebody else out there sees something they find offensive, they say to that person, hey, you, I don't think you should be making fun of such and such. And then the person says, oh, yeah? And then they make fun of such and such again, right? And then so, therefore, (laughs) you're guilty at that point of breaking, as I understand what you read to us, Johnson, you would then be found guilty of violating this no trolling law in New Zealand and, therefore, possibly subjected to fines. I don't know if prison time is going to be backing this, but usually if you don't pay the fines in government land, you go to prison, you go to jail, for a certain period of time. And then who knows, maybe after that they'll they'll do something like, you know, what happens with hackers here when you get out of jail for hacking? They usually put some sort of restriction on you saying you can't use the computer, you can't even get near a cell phone or whatever, like you essentially are a Luddite now because you got convicted of some sort of (laughs) hacking crime. And so what if they do that to people who end up getting found guilty of this? Like you are on severe internet restriction, you can't log on for another year or two years or whatever. And if we find out that you've been using the internet, you're going back to jail on violation of probation. You, if you don't think that's possible, then you just haven't been paying attention. Right. They could totally do that. So Scary. do wow. you support this? Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And if you do support it, then how can you justify this? I mean, I understand that it's, you know, the idea is that people are, are hurt. Their feelings are hurt. Okay, I get that. There have been some things said online about me that I don't appreciate, but, you know, you just kind of deal with it. It's just part and parcel of being on the internet. And I would never want to see anybody in trouble for saying things that other people don't like online. Because there's all kinds of things that people can find offensive. And the the definition in this law is very, very open-ended. It is very nebulous. It is something, you know, I don't have the wording in front of me, Johnson, but uh, it was something like, you know, basically anything that somebody doesn't like. And that doesn't necessarily mean name-calling. It doesn't necessarily mean threats. It could just simply be an opinion you have about something that they don't like. Now, is the law specifically for trolling, like someone instigating the trolling? Or is it, can it be for someone posting a, you know, semi-offensive photo? Like, not completely offensive, You're going to have to keep something. reading this, Johnson. Yeah, You're going to have yeah. to re-read it, I guess, it. because it's... Uh... My interpretation of it, Danica, was that anything that is posted that someone finds offensive and then asks you to stop... I thought it was just stop, trolling. Mm-mm. You know, just like, you know, someone instigating trolling, like say, you know, he does this all the time, but say Johnson's trolling me, I tell him to stop, he keeps going, then I say, okay, I'm going to call the internet authorities on you. It's not like, that's what I'm asking. No, it's not necessarily something, the way I read it. Let's say that there's a known person out there who trolls people a lot, right? And let's say that that person is a libertarian who supports using violence against the police. And let's say someone like, well, let's say me goes and says, hey, that sounds like a really stupid idea. And that person says, hey, I don't like you calling me stupid. Stop stop saying that. And I say, okay, well, if you want to use violence against the police, you first. 
and then that person gets angry and unfriends me on Facebook. Well, in New Zealand, I would be arrested instead of that person unfriending me. I could just be, you know, have the police show up and say, you continued trolling when you were told to stop. Well, then in New Zealand, you would- But he ha- didn't tell you to stop. He just said, don't call me stupid, but you didn't. You no, said it's a I, stupid I was, idea. I, I was told to stop it. I, that, I was simplifying what happened, but yes, uh, I was told Oh, okay. I'm sure there was some time in there where he was like, that's not a very nice thing to say. Well, in New Zealand, if someone says <laughs> something you don't like on their blog, you can simply ask them to stop posting those things. And then if they continue, then they go to jail. That's my understanding yeah, potentially. of what you, what you read to us there. Yeah, potentially. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Let me see what the Washington Post says about it. Okay. harmful. It's the, called the Harmful Digital Communications Bill. Um, same information about the fun here. Causing harm by co- posting digital communication. Um, yeah, I don't know about that, Johnson. I don't know if we have time to uh, to research uh, on the yeah, air. Yeah, I, I really don't know. Unfortunately, you know, you want me to read it Here's again. Here's the but EFF. We, kind of, Where was your story from originally? Uh, ooh, I, I'm on a different one now. I so got I this know. one from the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. New Zealand's Harmful Digital Communications Act, harmful to everyone except online harassers. Last week, they uh, the parliament there passed the Harmful Digital Communications HDC Act. The act was conceived over three years ago as an initiative to address online bullying among young New Zealanders. Since then, prompted by subsequent highly visible online scandals in the country, its scope widened dramatically. The final act takes on nothing less than all content on the internet that might be deemed harmful. But in its eagerness to prevent so-called harmful communications from spreading across the net and by providing streamlined non-judicial methods to remove that content, the creators of the HDC may end up exacerbating the very harassment it was originally intended to mitigate. Gee, that's sort of how yeah. government programs work. Wow. The definition is anyone who causes serious emotional distress. It's completely subjective. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's If you see something you don't like on the internet and you report and you tell this person to stop it and they don't, they are going to be guilty of this, right? Yeah. Remember that article about whether or not the, the dress was blue or gold? Mm-hmm. Oh, don't yeah. Serious emotional distress. It needs to be banned. <laughs> Many, so much fight, so much butt hurt over that. Many harassers want to chase their victims offline. They use their voices to drown out and silence the online voices of others. And through its adoption of some of the worst aspects of the United States Internet law, the HDC Act provides a new tool for those online harassers to enact that wish. So they're saying here, the EFF is saying, this is going to backfire. And when you look at government programs, when they create mm-hmm. some sort of government program with the intention to do whatever, you know, stop drugs or end poverty, uh, these government right. programs frequently have the opposite of their <laughs> intended effects. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, being on the internet in New Zealand from now on is going to be like a hellscape of just the worst possible trolling. Like, New Zealand internet, you log on, it's like the only site that you can actually access is 4chan. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just horrific every time. You're like, oh, no. The act has five key elements. It establishes a set of guiding communications principles under which the rest of the bill operates, creates a government-approved agency to help the internet users who believe themselves harmed by digital communications it creates a new set of court orders that the district courts can serve against internet hosts or authors on referral from the approved agency it constructs a new set of civil and criminal offenses for creating or propagating so-called harmful digital communications and in its section 20 it introduces the 48-hour content takedown process based loosely on the u.s dmca takedown regime whereby individuals can demand hosting providers remove content they believe is harmful The act also makes some amendments to existing law to clarify their applicability to digital communications and slightly extends their reach. Some parts of their unintended consequences are fixable through the reasonable administration of the law. But you and I know that's not going to happen. When you create a government program, one of the other things that happens is the intentions of the authors of the bill, the, the authors of the law initially... Don't matter that once it gets in the hands of the bureaucrats. Almost an oxymoron, reasonable <laughs> reasonable litigation or whatever. It's almost law. a guarantee it will be enforced unreasonably. Right, and even, oh, yeah. even if it appears to be reasonably enforced in the initial days, it will morph into something that becomes even more tyrannical than it was originally intended. We'll come back with more on Free Talk Live. What if I told you that you could have the power to heal yourself and your loved ones with the gift of music? 
Unlock the healing secrets of the Bible with Whole Tones, a unique CD therapy program featuring seven secret ancient healing frequencies uncovered in the music of King David. Now you can get free samples of this music to discover their power to create energy, relieve stress, break negative cycles, and restore damaged DNA. For thousands of years, music has been used to heal. Ancient Greek doctors used flutes, lyres, and scythers to aid in digestion, treat depression, and induce sleep. Native Americans have used music to treat disease. Today, music is used to soothe post-operative pain, lower blood pressure, and boost immunity. Now you can benefit from healing music therapy in the comfort of your own home or office. Visit Holtones44.com and get a free sample of the seven secret healing frequencies discovered by King David. Visit W-H-O-L-E Tones44.com today for your free sample. That's Holtones44.com. Holtones44.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. We're talking about the Harmful Digital Communications Act. And the Electronic Frontier Foundation says this New Zealand law that has now passed by their, uh, what do they call it, their poly- Par- parliament? Parliament, yeah. Uh, that, uh, that the folks over at the EFF are saying this is going to hurt everyone except the online harassers. <laughs> they believe this is going to have a, the reverse of its intended effect, and the intended effect is to stop people from feeling bad on the Internet. Oh, no, you have no, you must not be offended anywhere you go online. Much but hurt you have. 
That's the way it's sounding here, and I want to continue with their analysis because they do a good legal analysis over at the EFF. Good. Yeah, EFF, yeah. of course. A lot of good. Uh, they've got a lot of somewhat freedom-oriented uh, attorney types on staff over there. They're not a particularly libertarian group, but a lot of times their viewpoint falls in line with the liberty viewpoint. So we'll continue with that here in a moment. And also want to invite you to our website where you can go to freetalklive.com and you can get interactive. You can download archives of the show. Uh, you can watch the webcam. We got the cam over at cam.freetalklive.com. You can watch and listen to the show and also chat with other Free Talk Live listeners at the same time over at cam.freetalklive.com. So this is the uh, Harmful Digital Communications Act, the HDC, as it is being called, and over at the EFF, they're claiming that some parts of the act's unintended consequences are fixable through the reasonable administration of the law, which you can count on them not right. being reasonable. Sure. Reasonable and, administration of the law is yeah. like, that's crazy. It's like an oxymoron. This will be arbitrarily and capriciously enforced against people who the government doesn't like and just random people who get caught up with somebody that doesn't like them. Uh, it's going to be used for people who hate each other to bring criminal charges against one another and I'm sure we're just scratching the surface because we don't know how far they're going to take this. But one thing you can count on is any government program goes further than its original intentions. Sure, yeah. And I imagine that they're likely going to side with the person that gets you know butthurt about this whole thing. That's just what it's probably going to be. Well, right. That's what it's designed to protect mm -hmm. is the person who feels offended Well, they're not going to tell content. the person, hey, you need to grow a backbone in no, a nice won't. way. No, they'll say, we'll get right on this. Yeah. And they'll uh, investigate and then possibly bring charges. The bulk of the act is enforced under judicial review, which will hopefully give sufficient weight to its stipulation that both administrators and courts act consistently with the rights and freedoms contained in the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act of 1990. The human rights perspective offered by the Bill of Rights Act is badly needed. The HDC communications principles illustrate the law's curious view of what legitimate online content should be. Among other things, the principles state that digital communications should not do the following things. This is what they want to stop from happening on the Internet. They say digital communications should not, quote, disclose sensitive personal facts about an individual, unquote. So you can't dox somebody. Right. You can't put information out there. Now they're saying sensitive. Well, what do you consider sensitive? Is my home address sensitive? Is my telephone number sensitive? Is my last name sensitive? Sure. My full name, my birth date. I mean, what you know, this is not necessarily truly private information. If you did enough digging, you could probably find out all of that information about any one individual. Sure. You know, there are websites out there that uh, allow you to do background checks on people, for instance. And you don't have to agree to not reveal that information when you do those background checks, right? I mean, this is these background checks are gathering what is essentially publicly available information from various different databases. So that's kind of scary. Saying things, disclosing sensitive personal facts, personal facts, sensitive personal facts. His penis length. That would be a sensitive personal fact, right? <laughs> right. I mean, wow. Uh, their, your opinion about how the person is in bed. You can't write anything about an ex-lover or something like that. I mean, yeah, that's tacky to do. But there's a lot of tacky things on the Internet. But posting a picture that somebody sent you. This happens a lot, right, with the revenge porn. We've discussed that uh, here on Free yes. Talk Live. That would be something sensitive and personal. Uh, other things, they are saying that digital communication should not should not be grossly offensive to a reasonable person in the position of the affected individual. Meaning that if you're offended by something that is done online, whether it's done to you or not doesn't matter, just something that is offensive to you. It, as they're saying here, if you are a reasonable person in the person's position, would you also be offended by what was going on? Hmm. Now, so, would this yeah. allow somebody to take Free Talk Live off the air? We say things every night here that somebody could find offensive. Somebody who loves the state, for instance. Oh, yeah. How many times have you had callers come in and try and argue with you about how unreasonable you're doing? Like, certainly. Not often enough. No one has called tonight uh, to say they support this Right, I'm talking HDC. about in, like, the, pa in but the past yes, ones. But yes, often, in, I mean, over time, certainly people have called to disagree. Uh, but this would prevent them from calling to disagree. Now they could just call the New Zealand government up and say, I don't like what this radio show is saying. This is an offensive radio well, show. Well, wouldn't they have to call and say that uh, they don't want to hear you anymore? I guess they would, yeah. By your, to, but you're, not, you're offending me, and you're right. no longer allowed to offend me. 
the, you're not a syndicate. I guess they, well, I guess they could. Well, they're out of their jurisdiction, so they can't right, they enforce can block, on us. Right, they can block, I guess, anyone trying to access the site from New Zealand from, gain, from getting to it, certainly. But that's probably the extent of what they could do, right? They don't yet, as I understand it, in New Zealand, they don't yet have uh, restrictions on content in on the internet. Meaning gotcha. that there aren't state-run blocking right, I'm saying software. If, I'm saying that they could, probably the farthest that they could do would be to just block the website from being allowed to be accessed. In within, theory, but that doesn't, theory. they haven't done that yet. Right, there right, are right. some restrictions restrictions in Australia on certain websites sure. being accessed. Same with on China, the, too. Right, on the national level. I, at least I haven't heard about that in New Zealand. If you know more about New Zealand, you're welcome to enlighten us here at 855-450 free. Other things that these are their principles. These are the HDC Act's communication principles saying what is legitimate online. They're saying th what is not supposed to be online, according to the rules here, is something that makes a false allegation. How many websites out there are conspiracy theory websites where they're making all kinds of allegations about sure. who was behind 9-11 or, you know, other kooky, you know, conspiracy theories or some less kooky ones? Anything that is a false allegation would be prohibited here. Uh, further, they say the information on the Internet cannot, quote, contain a matter that is published in breach of confidence. So if somebody tells you to not reveal a secret and you go ahead and reveal that secret, criminal charge. <sighs> Or civil. I'm not sure if they're going to be charging this criminally or civilly, mm -hmm. but you're going to court. And, you know, okay, yeah, if you've got a contract that says you can't reveal a company's secrets, you know, if you work for KFC, you know, the Colonel's secret recipe, and you've agreed to not reveal that publicly, then, yeah, you should be able to be sued because you've agreed to right. not reveal it. Right, on your contract. But if it's just something that's a verbal agreement, it doesn't, it shouldn't have the same level of protection. I'm not arguing someone should go out there and reveal secrets on the internet, but on the other hand... Sometimes revealing secrets can be useful, like, oh, I don't know, Edward Snowden, for instance. Or he, Chelsea Manning. Or Exactly. These are people who published information that absolutely was classified. It was published in breach of uh, the government's confidence, but it was done for our best interests. It was done because it was the right thing to do to reveal that information. Now, obviously, you know, they didn't need the Digital Communications Act to go after Edward Snowden or uh, Chelsea Manning in their cases. Going on here from the EFF, in focusing on so-called harmful communications, the Act consistently neglects all other forms of communication that might seem less than ideal, but are nonetheless protected speech. Much of human expression is in contravention of one or more of these principles, from private disagreements on a viral video of police brutality, a whistleblower's leak, or heartfelt political call to, call to arms. If the full spectrum of human expression happens to be expressed online, then the HTC Act applies. These principles demonstrate that New Zealand now holds digital communications to a far higher and narrower standard than any form of offline expression. Which is ironic to me because it's easier to get away from digital communications you don't like. If you're walking down right. the street and there's some street preacher who's shouting things you don't like, you know, it's a little more difficult to plug your ears, a little more inconvenient. You could still likely hear through your earplugs what that person is, is saying, whereas online the tools exist for you to avoid almost completely things yes. that you don't like. And if you want your kids to avoid certain things, there are blocking tools and things like that. So, But, of course, those things t require responsibility. Those tools require the willingness to take your own experience, your own experience as a user of the internet, into your own hands and take responsibility for preventing yourself from seeing the things that you find uncomfortable. But if you support this law, I really want to hear from you. Our toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. Going on here, their Bill of Rights limitations only applies to the courts and the administrators of the HDC Act in Section 20, New Zealand's lawmakers have created a novel regime that, like its DMCA inspiration, involves no court or regulatory oversight. And in Section 20, their legislators have imported an already broken process and rendered it even more inimical. Ooh, I don't know this word. In inimical? I'm going to have to look that one up. Do you know it? Inimical? Doesn't sound familiar. Let's see here. Inimical. <laughs> tending to obstruct or harm. So, rendered it even more obstructive to free expression. <laughs> we'll talk more about this Section 20. They're saying this is one of the worst parts of the HDC. I've Ooh. got details on that on the way here. But if you think that people should be prohibited from saying things that could be offensive online, and you're serious about it, I want to hear from you. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. 
Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 9th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.36 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,162 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $272. Antiwar.com reports Yemen's Hadi government in exile, backed by ongoing Saudi attacks on the country, aiming to reinstall them, yesterday informed the United Nations that they are open to a conditional truce that would end the war, issuing a series of demands. The Hadi offer, according to a spokesman, was to back an end to the Saudi attacks on Yemen in return for the Shiite Houthis agreeing to cede them four provinces. None of the provinces were specified and were only said to be in the east and south of the country. That's not all they want, however, as Hadi is demanding a release of several prisoners held by the Houthis, including their defense minister and some other top officials. The UN confirmed receipt of the truce offer. There has been no formal response by the Houthis, however, and they're probably not going to agree to give up four provinces of the country to the Hadi faction in return for a truce. The Houthis have sought an agreement on a transition to an elected government, something the Hadi government opposes. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a judge on Tuesday ordered Time Warner Cable to pay a Texas woman $229,500 for harassing her with 163 robocalls meant for another customer. U.S. District Judge Alvin Hellerstein in Manhattan said the cable company went too far when it continued making robocalls to Araceli King of Irving, Texas, 153 of them after she told the company that they had the wrong number. After getting 10 phone calls from the company between July and October 2013, King had a seven-minute conversation with a Time Warner representative telling them the customer they were trying to call, Louise Perez, did not have the mobile phone number she has. The phone number had been assigned to her by Sprint after Perez had used it. Time Warner called King 153 more times, including 74 phone calls that came after King filed a lawsuit in March 2014. Hellerstein said Time Warner Cable's actions were 
particularly egregious and said that the company did not take the lawsuit seriously, so he tripled the penalty to $1,500 per phone call. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Baltimore Police Commissioner Anthony Batts was fired on Wednesday following criticism of his handling of rioting over the death of a man from an injury in police custody and a skyrocketing homicide rate. Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake said the focus on Batts and the leadership of the 2,500 officer force had become a distraction in fighting resurgent crime and was hurting her goal of attracting families to the city. She told a City Hall news conference, as we have seen in recent weeks, many continue to die. Families are tired of feeling the pain, and so am I. Batts, who came to Baltimore from California in September 2012, had a reputation as a reformer and will be replaced on an interim basis by Deputy Commissioner Kevin Davis. Batts came under fire for his handling of rioting following the funeral of Freddie Gray on April 27th. Gray died after suffering an injury while being transported in a police van, heightening a national debate on police treatment of minorities. Six officers have been charged in his death. Bats and other commanders told officers to hold the line with rioters rather than confront people causing damage or threatening police. His cautious response was seen as an improvement over other cities, such as Ferguson, Missouri, that had used heavy-handed tactics to shut down protests after complaints of police brutality. But Bats came under criticism for not being better prepared for the rioting. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A Japanese-American internment facility was still in operation in the mountains of Northern California. The facility should have been closed in 1945 and its 6,000 residents released, but unfortunately the camp was overlooked until this week. I am happy to announce, however, that the remaining 118 de detainees have now been fully exonerated of suspicion of spying for General Tojo and they have been freed. Next item of business, the President will be meeting with the Australian Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. Yes, Denise? Oversight. How could this have happened? Well, Denise, it looks like the camp just somehow slipped through the cracks. The end of the Second World War was a hectic time in America, and it's only natural that we let a couple of things slip in our excitement over defeating the Nazis. Who is going to be held responsible for this? Congressional investigation? No, there won't. In fact, the War Relocation Authority was responsible for the decommissioning of the internment facilities, um, but that organization ceased to exist in 1946, so no. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're back here kicking off the third hour of the program. You can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. And I especially want to hear from you if you think that uh, this New Zealand law sounds like a good idea. They'll be making it so anybody who's offended on the Internet can go to the government and basically, well, first they have to go to the person who has offended them and tell them, Sir, you have offended me and I demand that you stop. And then if the person continues to be offensive, then they can go to the government and then the government can come after them with either civil or criminal court case. And the Electronic Freedom Foundation, uh, or excuse me, Electronic Frontier Foundation, I apologize, we get that. Freedom. Get that wrong. <laughs> yeah, they don't actually stand for freedom. They're just on the frontier. Um, anyway, the EFF sometimes takes the uh, the pro-freedom position. More often than not, they, they do. In this case, they're going to explain how it is this new HDC, the Harmful Digital Communications Act. Uh, they're going to explain how they believe that this will actually hurt everyone except the online harassers. 
that somehow this is going to have the opposite of its intended uh, intended effects. The intended effect, of course, is to stop online harassment and uh, people being offended online. But what if the opposite happens? Uh, tonight with you in studio, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. And Annika. So Section 20, they're zooming in on here on this HDC. They say it's like... Pe- the- well, people will do with this law, I'm sure, exactly what they do with Facebook policy, which is to use the enforcement uh, arm or whatever of Facebook to harm people. I'm going to report your fake name. Because you're, I don't like you, and you're a transvestite or whatever, or transgendered. So you maybe have a show name or some sort of fake name. So I'm going to report that name. We've had, or to- you know, just uh, reporting everyone's, you know, every picture on someone's profile is fake or or is a you know offensive or. It, We've it had it happen where somebody doesn't like something posted to the Free Talk Live page, and they'll uh, report us, and then we'll get banned from Facebook for X amount of days. Right. In some cases, when it was pictures, you know, a picture that didn't even violate Facebook policy. That's right. Uh, so Just the admins there have no idea what they're doing. So, And we've had people contact us recently. There was a, some, there was a, a meme that was posted on the Free Talk Live page with the Confederate flag and the U.S. flag and basically saying they're both... Uh, they both stood for slavery. I mean, I'm, I'm that got reported. Summary. I'm summarizing okay. what this thing was. I don't know if it was reported to Facebook. I suspect somebody did report it to Facebook. We didn't see that happen. But what we did see happen was I saw a couple messages come into the Facebook page, and I don't read all the messages that come into the Facebook page. That's Mark that spends most of the mm-hmm. time doing that. But I'll see them every now and then. And I saw a couple of them that said, "Hey, I th- I don't like this content. This content is offensive. I would like you to remove it." And then they posted that that picture. Right. And so in New Zealand now, if you do that, if you send something to somebody and say, "I don't like that you're what you you've offended me with your post." And then they don't, you know, they continue to post things that are offensive, they could be uh getting in trouble under this new HDC. Now, under section 20, according to the EFF at their website eff.org, they say it's like the DMCA, but even worse. Now, Johnson or Danica, can you explain the DMCA at all? Are you familiar with that at all? The Digital Millennium Copyright Act? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's essentially just a, a method, uh, automated method in most cases for taking down copyrighted content. Well, uh, and- I mean, it's it's just a law that enforces, it forces people to take down content. And this includes, say, like videos, for example. Sure. Yeah, well, they're, they're using copyrighted music. Right, Any so if somebody music, video, uh, even writing, you know, so just can be taken down if so, if a company files a request and uh, under threat of fine and all sorts of other things. I don't know right. exactly. If you what see the, something the on the uh, the internet that you believe is yours by copyright law, you can send a request in through YouTube or whoever, and then it is like you said, an automated system. But according to the story here, the reason why it's an automated system is because intermediaries such as Google, Facebook, or your local website hosting company are under U.S. law broadly protected against lawsuits over their users' uploaded content. However, that protection against that uh, against those lawsuits is conditional on them complying with the DMCA's copyright safe harbor rules. So part of those safe harbor rules kick in when an intermediary receives a request from a copyright owner to take down an infringing work uploaded by one of their users. If the intermediary swiftly takes down the content, they are automatically protected from being themselves sued by the copyright owner. So that's why it's that right. automation yeah, system exists. Yep. Uh, the intermediary is also protected from being sued for damages by the uploader caused by them suddenly deleting their content. So by jumping through the government's hoops, YouTube is it's CYA. They're covering their butt. They're uh, mm-hmm. legally not liable for anybody that uploads copyrighted material so long as their system automatically removes it upon a takedown request. Now, the DMCA takedown process, according to the EFF, is an attempt to create a regime where copyright law can be enforced without the courts, where copyright holders and Internet authors have balanced rights, and where hosts like Google or your ISP are freed from the responsibility of determining the legal accuracy of a takedown request. Oh, wow. Oh. I just had a really cool thought. Okay. So if you were a company like Google or these other companies, especially if these companies could somehow collude to say, okay, let's, we're going to, because I'm sure that these these requests for takedowns have been getting more and more and more. You're talking about under heard. DMCA? Yeah, under DMCA and under other things. We we know that these requests are coming becoming more and more and more, like there's more and more content is being requested mm-hmm. to be taken down or whatever, right? So what would be interesting is if companies like Yahoo and Google and, uh, you know, any other media companies out there who have these online services that were, get these takedown requests, if they all clued and said, on this date, we're going to 
turn off our takedown systems and take all of the cases to court. Um, wait. I mean, so... it's unlikely that they're going to do that, but it would be really cool. <laughs> so wait, are you saying that they would take all what of the case? cases that go all the DMCA cases? Because right now they're meaning they're... that the person complaining would then have to go to court against YouTube, uh, and probably YouTube and the person who they're complaining against. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think they want to take on that kind of litigation. I mean, that's a, that sure, sounds very they expensive. Don't, right? Sure, it could be very expensive, but it could also be completely crippling for the the government because of this law. Yeah, like, okay, I mean, now there's, you know, like, say, say this system gets to the point of where there's, you know, millions of cases or whatever, and you just drop that all in the, the lap of the local court system. Yeah, I, I don't know if it would be local courts or would it be federal courts. I don't th I think. Copyright? Be, I think it would be local. See, I don't know enough why, about copyright. I don't. I don't know. Why would it be local then? If they're if they're going up against this one person, it's federal uh, law, right? So let's uh, say maybe I'm then. maybe, it would be maybe I have I a complaint know. against Jenna Marbles, and so I would have to go to probably L.A. because she's in California against. I Jenna wouldn't think and necessarily YouTube, the individual person. I would think that it would be in the jurisdiction of wherever the company is located. So California, then, since yeah. they're located. In well, uh, unfortunately, be, Johnson, your uh, scenario is probably never going to come true. No, because it's probably never going to come yeah. true. But I think it would be really interesting if one of these companies just finally did say, because it's all being automated. In other words, it's just a system of compliance, right? right? Mm. We're complying with the law, and we're going to comply over and over and over and over again. Yep. And it's building. Essentially, the compliance systems are being abused because they're being used more and more and more and more, and it's just getting out of hand. I mean, the stuff with DMCA takedowns on YouTube. YouTube alone is ridiculous because they're automated and a lot of times they're not even videos are being taken down that are not in violation of the DMCA. They're yeah. not in violation of copyright. Well, There's fair use provisions for using certain amounts of audio and certain clips from other content. There are takedowns that happen even without a request is what you're saying, right? Well, like where yeah, they've got an automation sure. check system that that's, if they recognize a certain music track, they'll flag it and sure. then it won't even get into the system. Right. That's one problem. And that's if YouTube's doing it themselves with their own systems. But also the record companies have their own systems and sometimes those mm -hmm. get false positives. Sometimes there are just crazy people that are just reporting things willy nilly or just or like I said earlier, people who are trying to harm other content creators by filing these false bogus takedown requests. And so this is just getting crazy out of hand. So what would be interesting is if they said, nope, we're not complying anymore. If you want to take this to court, well, then we'll go, I guess we're going to do that. Here's a million cases a day. Because this is the yeah. system that you generated. Here's your million court cases. We'll have a million more for you tomorrow. You better get processing, <laughs> right. you 20 people down at the law office. Yeah. Oh, you can't handle it? Well, then I guess we can't comply. Motion to dismiss. Motion uh, to dismiss. Trial. All of them. And we're gonna. here's what we're going to automate. We're going to automate the files for the motions to dismiss. Million of those. Hope your servers can handle it. <laughs> that would be I like awesome. the way you think, Johnson. I mean, that's a cool idea. Unfortunately, these corporations didn't get to where they are by being uh, bucking the system mentality. Yeah. Uh, we'll come back here with more on this Section 20 of the HDC, because we haven't really gotten into what that means. It's sort of like the DMCA, but they're going to tell us how it differs, and it's even worse coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever, Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. When commercials come on, don't push the button. Instead, listen. Even if you don't sell things for a living, you're still selling in the various conversations and transactions that make up your busy day. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. So take a lesson from Madison Avenue. Often the fewer words, the more effective the message. Like Jiffy Lube, where you never need an appointment or the Office Max ad that says, you supply the ambition, we supply everything else. How about online ticket broker StubHub.com, the way in when it's sold out, or CyberCupidMatch.com's seductive, go ahead, it's okay to look. How cleverly and succinctly can you distill your message? For more tips, hit SurvivalSpeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live, and it's brought to you by ExpressCoin, the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. You can get them over at ExpressCoin.com. You can grab their app or just do it straight from the website. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, you can get cryptocurrency with money order or check. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. And they're a licensed money services business. Plus, you can save on up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency. You'll pay no fee when you use coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live. Co uh, coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. The uh, price of Bitcoin seems to have sort of flattened out over the last few days. It's up at around uh, 270 U.S. dollars per Bitcoin. That's up from around where it was like uh, 250, 240, just up even... from 230 a few weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, it's, exactly. It's gone up quite a bit uh, in just the last month, likely due to oh, the situation you in Greeks. Greece. <laughs> Likely, that's a factor here. And, it's all Greek uh, to me. And their banks are still closed this week, by the way. Yeah. The, uh, the bank holiday has been extended for an extra week. And you know there's still some tumultuous financial times over there. So maybe Bitcoin will keep going up. Who knows what's going to happen? Of course, it could go down, too. Your risk, there is risk involved. Go to ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL, and you will save even more. It's already really affordable, even without that coupon code. They've got the best what I consider to be the best rate in that particular business, I think it's 3%. I mean, the uh, Bitcoin vending machine here in town, which I think is a good rate, is 5%. So, I mean, ExpressCoin, you really can't beat it. ExpressCoin.com. We're talking about the HDC. These are three letters that if you're in New Zealand, you are going to learn to hate. The Harmful Digital Communications Act. And they're saying here over at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, that it's like the DMCA in the United States, but even worse. Now, the DMCA is this system that is essentially been automated by YouTube and other content uh, syndicates or whatever you want to call them. 
content delivery networks that uh, if you challenge something's copyright, if you you claim, ah, Johnson, you've uploaded this video and I own the copyright to it. Right. Ding, your account gets hit. They mm -hmm. pull the video. YouTube says, hey, we yanked this video. And then they do give you the opportunity to say, well, I'm challenging that pull and I'm willing to take full legal liability for making this post. Then you can, in theory, get the thing relisted on YouTube if you're willing to yeah, jump through a bunch of hoops. Jump through and, those mm -hmm. hoops. So back to the story here. They're going to compare the DMCA to this new HDC, which the HDC restricts not just copyright. It's not about copyright. The HDC is about saying offensive things online, saying things that somebody doesn't like. And they're saying now that that is illegal. If someone asks you to stop saying the things you're saying, even if you're not saying them to the person, if you're just blogging it on your personal blog, if you're posting on your own personal Facebook page, somebody I'm doesn't like it, like, they can complain to the government. I'm imagining because there's like a lot of uh, people I've seen from New Zealand on uh, sites like Twitch, where it's like Twitch is a gaming thing where people stream their gaming content. Mm -hmm. I'm just imagining somebody being like trying to ruin one of these uh, stars, people who are making their money and making their livings. And they're being like, oh, you called me a noob. You got to get off now. You got to get offline because I don't like your, your channel because I, I'm a competitor. It hurts. It hurts my you know, feelings. Like, you know, it's like, you know, yeah, it hurts my feelings. A serious emotional harm. The DMCA takedown process creates this regime uh, where copyright law can be enforced without the courts. But in practice, this regime has been proven to be painfully lopsided in its incentives. The letter of the law says that takedown requests must be made in good faith under the penalty of perjury. But even with these restrictions in the law, inaccurate takedowns are rife and are sent with no legal consequences. So even though you're in theory facing perjury if you are lying, saying, hey, I don't like this video, it's copyrighted. Well, no, it's not copyrighted. It's not yours. You just didn't like it. Uh, there's no consequence for that. It also transpires that in the real world, the intermediaries are far more worried about being sued by rich and powerful copyrights holders like music labels and movie companies than they are concerned about legal action from their own users. Right. This and other problems mean that the DMCA is frequently misused to remove content that's perfectly legitimate. And the EFF has documented this chilling effect of the DMCA regime over 15 years Section 20. So now we're back to the HDC. This is the new law in New Zealand restricting freedom of speech, restricting people saying offensive things. This new HDC attempts to map and expand this already flawed system onto a regime for the speedy takedown of all so-called harmful content online. In the HDC model, complaints who have spot or excuse me, com complainants rather, who have spotted content that breaches the communication principles and has so-called caused harm, can send a takedown order to the intermediary. The intermediary sends a notice of this order to the author of the allegedly harmful content. If the author challenges the original takedown within 48 hours, the content stays up, otherwise it's removed. If the intermediary follows these rules, they remain protected from being sued themselves over the content. In effect, it's a DMCA-like safe harbor but for all potentially harmful content. Sound reasonable? The drafters of the HDC Act clearly thought so, but in uncomprehendingly mimicking the DMCA regime, they omitted what few safeguards the original has against unfettered abuse. Unlike the DMCA, there is no penalty for misrepresentation in the HDC Act. Section 20 complainants can declare any content to be harmful, and will suffer even fewer repercussions from misrepresenting their belief than the copyright industry faces for illeg illegitimate copyright takedowns in the United States. So I think I see where they're going with this here. There's no penalty for saying something is harmful when in point of fact it isn't. And so what they're saying is that's what the trolls are going to use well, I would to take like to, down the content of the people that they've been trolling. I would like to find where this law is mentioned. I'm sure that they have a documentation of their laws online, right? Who the New Zealand folks? Yeah, the New of Zealand. I'm sure they have their laws online. I would like. I, I would like to do, do, go to their website and report this law as offensive. As offensive. <laughs> I'm sure the government's uh, exempt. And from if you're their living in New Zealand and you're hearing this, do that. Do it and tell us, please. Please, do. please if you're living in New Zealand, that would be a very entertaining to see what happened in that case. Yeah, just and and take but remember, court for in it. government law, frequently they exempt themselves from enforcement. So, like in a wiretapping law, <laughs> there's an exemption for law enforcement. There, for instance. Uh, unlike the DMCA, where in theory only the rights holder can make a complaint under Section 20 in the HDC, anyone can send a note to your New Zealand host 
and request your content be removed. And under the current letter of the HDC Act, each of those millions of potential complainants can demand a removal as many times as they want. The HDC Act magnifies the well-documented flaws of the DMCA into the perfect heckler's veto. This is an ideal tool for coordinated harassing mob or simply a large crowd that disapproves of a particular piece of unpopular but perfectly legitimate speech. Moreover, if the original user misses the 48-hour window to respond to a takedown order, then they will have no legal avenue to restore their deleted work. It's worth considering exactly who might most likely uh, miss that 48-hour deadline. Certainly, a vulnerable user facing hundreds or thousands of coordinated malicious complaints might find herself quickly overwhelmed. Another type of user who might be reticent to serve a counter notice is one who would choose not to share much personal identifying information with their hosts and is therefore more difficult to contact by the intermediary. Vulnerable classes of internet speakers often do this so as to limit the risk of being doxxed. They are rightly suspicious of providing third parties like hosting companies with personal details out of fear that the intermediary might accidentally reveal that to attackers. So they use pseudonymous accounts or otherwise hide their real identities. These users may not be reading the throwaway email or other contact details they provided if they provided any at all. Which means that if the person who created this so-called offensive content is unable to be reached within that 48-hour window, their content's gone forever. Right. It can't be appealed at that point. So anybody who doesn't like you, including the trolls, mm -hmm. can now use this supposed anti-trolling law to, to delete all your stuff. go after everything that you do. Great idea. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. All right, so suddenly Walmart, eBay, Amazon, everybody wants to ban the rebel flag. Well, the rebel flag is an important part of American history. The rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of Southern pride and Southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. Go to ourflags.com. That's our, like rebel, our, the letter R, ourflags.com. Get your rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? Ourflags.com. That's ourflags.com. Go now. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. Free Talk Live. Your show is dangerous for people. Yes, it is very dangerous for the, for the state. And it's dangerous for the status quo. Sure. It's dangerous for the status quo, Bob, and it's dangerous because people like you who only want one particular message, and that is crack down, put all those people in jail. We need to bust the border up and we need to hurt peaceful people. That's what your message is. Yours is the real dangerous message because you're the one who's advocating aggression against peaceful people. Don't you think that's shameful? No, I think if it's against the law, you shouldn't be advocating against the law. I'm for the law. Ding, ding. And if you break the law, hey, it's, it's... In the 1860s, it was against the law for black people to escape from their masters. Do you think they should have been brought back? No. Okay. Not. You're a lawbreaker. The United States made it against the law for Indians to uh, mix with white people. Do you think that that was a good law? No. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order 
and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who hey. hey. do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's victimless crime spree. Watch it for free and order the director's cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. If you want to join us, you don't have to talk about freedom of speech on the Internet. You can bring up anything that you'd like to discuss. It's open phones all the time here. Our toll-free number is 855 450 free what if... Of course, if whatever you bring up causes us serious emotional distress, we might have you arrested and thrown in New Zealand gulag. No, we, we definitely <laughs> wouldn't do that. It's free talk live, open phones. You can say anything offensive here so long as it's not the F word, the <laughs> S word. Or the A word. The C word. A word's a little janky. It depends on the context. Um, you know, you could say... Uh, the A word in the context of a donkey, for instance. So Right, but you can't say the A and the H together. Yeah, you can't do the one with the H after that. That's true. Oh, censorship. <laughs> yeah, so there is that. But uh, generally, the content here is, uh, is what if, you know, open form. What if a donkey fell into a deep hole? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that could happen. It could certainly happen. Something else that could happen is you could go to purse.freetalklive.com and you absolutely could get 25% off pretty much anything you want to buy over at Amazon. How do I know this? I've done it. In fact, I've done it before Purse even came on as a partner of Free Talk Live. I've been a fan of Purse for several months, ever since Roger Veer actually turned me on to it. I saw him post about Purse on his Facebook page, and I thought, that sounds kind of cool. Discount on Amazon? Okay. Give me a reason to spend Bitcoin. See, that's the thing. You've got to use your Bitcoin if you want to get 20 25% off, maybe even more, off over at Amazon. So, you probably want to buy stuff in this lifetime. You're going to pay for it. If you're going to pay full price, why not get 20% off? There's just no reason not to do this. If you've got Bitcoin, this is your reason to spend it. And if you don't have Bitcoin, this is your reason to go get it. Remember, remember, you can go to ExpressCoin.com and go and get as much Bitcoin as you want for 3%. You can then turn that around and knock 20% off of anything over at Amazon. The average discount on purse is 20%. And the only reason why you would want less than 20% is if you want the item super fast. There's Purse Instant where you get an instant 5% off and you don't have to wait for an order to be filled. If you generally the higher the percentage discount you want, because you can get more than 25%, you, you select how Do, much you want is, off. Is there a bonus if you're a Prime member? Amazon Prime? Right. I'm not sure about that. Because if you're Purse and Prime, I mean, I'm Sometimes what will happen is the person who's ordering it has Prime. Right. And so they will send it to you. I've had someone send me something overnight because they want the Bitcoin that fast. Right. So it just all depends on mm. who the orderer is and that kind of thing. So if you're willing to wait, you can get a sweet discount on anything on Amazon. And sometimes you don't have to wait more than just a few hours right. to get the order filled. It's awesome. It works well. Go to purse.freetalklive.com. Get signed up there right now. Even if you don't know what you want yet, you can go to purse.freetalklive.com. Sign up for your account. And then it's so easy to use. They've got a real brief video that'll show you how it works. Purse.freetalklive.com. When you sign up through that link, Free Talk Live will get a very small portion of each purchase that you make from that point forward. So let's go to your calls and thoughts. Then there's more to say about this mess of a law in New Zealand, the HDC, the harmful communications, uh, excuse me, harmful digital communications act. Let's go to David, though, first in San Francisco. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Johnson and Danica. Hello, David. Oh, honey. Hey, hey you know, I heard you talking open topic, so I, I figured I'd uh, I, I'd test some ideas with you because you, you guys sound like you know a little about both the economy as well as technical issues. You know, okay. 
you know, yesterday the stock market had their big glitch, right? Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. What do you think that was all about? The Illuminati. Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> this, is where, this is where I was going to test a couple of different, uh, you know, if I got out my Sherlock Holmes, uh, just a hunch, just a hunch, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one I was thinking of is the Saudi Arabians, just like two weeks ago, opened up their brand new Wall Street. They're going to invest something like close to a half a trillion dollars on their brand new Wall Street. Now, if you think about the Saudis as con artists and ripoffs, who would ever be dumb enough to invest in their stock market? Well, that's a terrible thing to think about people because they're individuals. And to say that the Saudis are one way or another is ridiculous. I mean, they're, well, they're human beings. The there but, are probably some Saudis who are con artists yeah, and ripoffs. Yeah, you can't think of them all the same. But that's true of Americans, and that's true of everybody everywhere. So that's just, I mean, that's like, you want to talk about offensive. Boy, that's an offensive well, level of... Well, think uh, about in the last two weeks, how many shutters on the, wa- on the stock markets of the world have happened? China has just lost a huge chunk. Uh, America goes down for a couple of minutes, well, a couple of number of hours. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's pretty weird in itself. Are you suggesting that Saudi Arabians uh, attacked the American stock market? Well, that was my first uh, hunch. But my second one was a whole different direction. And that was, you remember, uh, there there was a famous movie uh, called The Sting. It had Robert Redford and Paul Newman in it. And, And it basically was trying to take advantage of a brokerage, being a bookie joint. So this brokerage house... They pretended that the hour of the day was one thing when it was minutes later, right? Now, if you could pull that same trick on Wall Street, you know, you could set the clocks a nanosecond. And if you knew that nanosecond, you could cash in and make billions. So the the whole idea— I don't understand what you're saying. What do you mean, set the clocks to cash in? How does that work exactly? do Do you remember that movie? No, I haven't seen it. Okay, it's a it's famous old one. It was best, uh, maybe even Oscar winner or something. But it, it basically sets it up. They have a fake bookie joint, and in the back in the 1930s, they used to bet on horse races, right, illegally. So they would have these bookie joints in you know in the back of a barber shop, or you know they'd have some okay. place in you know secret room somewhere where you'd talk to the bookie, and and so the idea that what these guys, they wanted to rip off the house, uh, and the house being the local crime lord. Mm-hmm. And so they set up a fake uh, bookie joint, and they pretended there was one big race, right? There was, uh, you know, down in Florida, so let's say. And they were up in Indiana, let's say. And so there was a, a, a telephone line. It was basically a radio station on, on a telephone line, like a party line. And that's what they did for these bookie joints. They set up like a party line that only the bookie houses had a direct feed. And they could listen to these races and they'd know just the results. And then Essentially, there's a there. delay. There's a built-in delay. So you're, the people who are oh. watching the race are not actually watching the live race. Uh, they're watching a slight delay to the race. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so what they do in this place is they, 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 they run a fake radio newscast mm-hmm. of the race, but they have different results. Uh, and it's five minutes late, and so in this, and they pulled this off in the nineteen. So they're essentially they're socially engineering yeah. uh, the people this, into giving them money that they wouldn't otherwise do. Right. Is this is right? actually also the plot of a, a great Gamble, British yeah. show called The Hustle, which is all about all okay. these different kinds of scams. And you're saying you're thinking there's somehow some way that was done on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Well, it was said that it was done a long time ago, and. Um, and that people have taken advantage of it. In fact, that's what the part of the con of derivatives comes from, that you're able to work somebody else's money and you get to you get the profit that you can work on their money for a tenth. Yeah, see, I'm no stock expert. I don't know what any of those things really are. And I, I have another interesting conspiracy theory for both okay. of you, though. Are you either of you aware that uh, on the July 7th at 11.45 p.m., uh, Anonymous, yes. the, the hacker group Anonymous, made a, a tweet that said, Hmm. Wonder if tomorrow is going to be bad for Wall Street. We can only uh-huh. hope. Yep. That to me, we talked about that the other night here on Free Talk Live. To me, uh, David, that sounds like the most plausible explanation that they were just hacked. 
And that suddenly the next day they had massive computer problems, supposedly internally on Wall Street. Was that just knows? a coincidence? Well, who knows if it's not like an Operation Mayhem kind of, you know, uh, uh, insider who right. was causing monkey wrenching. It know? absolutely could have been an anonymous person who works on the New York Stock Exchange, which would mean it was an internal issue, meaning it didn't, wasn't a hack from outside. But, you know, an inside job, so to speak. But it still certainly could have been right. anonymous. Awfully coincidental that they happened to tweet about that prior to the takedown. And the other thing I read, Johnson, was that they hadn't tweeted since. Now, I imagine they right. probably have since since yeah. then. But mm -hmm. all day, like since they tweeted that one thing about what's going to happen tomorrow, right. uh, then, you know, they didn't tweet during the entire time between right. when they tweeted that and when the actual takedown occurred. David, thanks for your call and the speculation. Sure. Anybody's free to speculate here, and it's, by the way, open phones all the time. It's not like just tonight. It's open phones. 855 450 free. And if we get the chance, we'll talk more about New Zealand and this ridiculous restriction on trolling that may backfire. It's probably will. It's Free Talk Live. We're coming up. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. We the people grow cotton, weep fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP, and right now you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever, Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. 
Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. We've got enough time if you want to join us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Tonight, Ian here with you. And Johnson. And Danica. Don't forget, you can uh, go to our website and get interactive there at freetalklive.com. If you like Free Talk Live and you appreciate what we're doing here, you want to help us get on more radio stations around the country, bring more internet listeners on board, expose new people to the ideas of freedom, then you can help us for $5 a month at the AMP program. Go to amp.freetalklive.com and get signed up there. It makes a big difference when you do that because it allows us to effectively market the show to more radio stations. It also allows us to expand our satellite footprint and more. You get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only Facebook group. So go and learn more over at AMP, A-M-P, dot freetalklive.com. You can use any major credit card through PayPal. You can also use Visa or MasterCard right on our website, so once again, that's amp.freetalklive.com. We've actually been talking a lot about the HDC. This is the, uh, they're calling it the HDC Act, the Harmful Digital Communications Act. Now, it's not in the United States. This is in New Zealand. But if this, you know, is something that happens successfully in New Zealand and it's not overturned immediately as illegal, and I don't see how it would be in New Zealand, given that there's no constitution there whatsoever, Although they do have some sort of Bill of Rights, which I have not read, so I'm not intimately familiar with what exactly what rights are ostensibly protected. So anyway, the uh, the Parliament there overwhelmingly voted for this. Johnson, you brought this story in initially, and then we found this article from the mm-hmm. Electronic Frontier Foundation, which really digs into how this thing is supposed to work. And the, in, the theory behind this law is it's supposed to protect people from being harassed online, or not just being harassed, but seeing things that are offensive. So this goes right. even further than the idea of stopping harassment. This is, you know, if you see something you don't like on the Internet, you can report that now in New Zealand. And further, the intermediary, as they call it, which would be the service provider, the host, the YouTube, the Googles of the world, the people who are providing the content that other people are uploading or posting. So like WordPress, for instance, mm-hmm. if, if uh, you've got a WordPress blog hosted at WordPress.com and somebody's offended by something you've said on your blog, then they can report it and WordPress will send some sort of a notice. There's a 48-hour window where the person has to respond or... Their work will be deleted, and they will have no legal avenue to restore it. And what was being pointed out here is that there's no penalty for somebody who wrongfully uh, sends a report. So you can just go and send as many reports on as many, you know, whatever content you don't like on the Internet. And, you know, even if you aren't part of the law was written to say that, well, you have to go to the the person and ask them to stop being offensive. And then if they don't stop being offensive, then you can go after them. But there's no provision uh, when the reporting requirements here. You can just go and report things. It doesn't matter if you've said something to them. It's a good thing that I'm not like a a lawmaker in New Zealand because I'd make the stipulation that if you made a false report and you were caught making a false report, that for five years, the only website that you could access on the internet would be Veggie (laughs) Tales. Oh, that would be cruel. That's a uh, Christian video series, right? Veggie yes. Tales. Yes. Yeah, I remember selling that for at children. Kmart for children. It would be either right. Disney or Veggie Tales. You know, something suitable for children because that's what you are. Section if you're falsely reporting content. Twenty. This is one of the most offensive sections of this incredibly offensive art. Uh, this law. Section twenty has another flaw. Says the EFF for this particular class of vulnerable user. The vulnerable users we're talking about here are people who might have signed up. Let's say they created a WordPress account with a throwaway email address because they want to have mm-hmm. an anonymous account mm-hmm. where they can blog what they really think without putting their name and information, but you know their professional right. uh, reputation behind that. 
I mean, this is not uncommon, right, where people have information they want to get out there, but they don't want to put their name behind it. So if they put a throwaway email address on the account and someone says, I'm offended by this, report. Well, this is great. Again, another thing, another suggestion for New Zealanders, I think you should lobby for a provision that says that um, whatever way that they have to use to contact someone to have to to find them legally to prosecute for this must also be the way that they actually contact them to um to to levy this warning or whatever to get the 48 so what hours that mean? so okay so what that would mean is that the government would not be able to use the email address that they signed up with to notify them in other words if that's not good enough to notify them right like and then the 48 hour starts like oh well we sent you an email well right? the government wouldn't be sending the email it would be the service provider okay the service provider if it's not good enough to send the service provider if the service provider contacts them and the email it doesn't go through or whatever right and the 48 hour window expires well that shouldn't be good enough because then what's going to happen is that if they're not contacted that way, what the government's going to do is say, well, well, then we need the IP. We get the IP. We're going to go to the ISP with the IP and then find out who it, you know was using the service with this particular ISP based on their internet address at the time. And, oh, now we know that it's this person who owns this account, and now we can serve them legally and, and serve them with this $33,900 fine. Um but if that's the method that's used to contact people, then I think what should happen is that somebody should lobby to say, if this law is going to be on the books, then that's the way that they, these people need to be contacted. They must, You must contact the actual person based on the IP at the time and make the government jump through the hoops to actually get that information. Yeah, that's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. But <laughs> somebody could lobby for it, and that would effectively destroy this law. Essentially, yeah, but they're not going to change no the one law. Would jump, no one would jump through the hoops anymore. But, but that, they're not going to change this but law. You don't it passed need to overwhelmingly. Change, but you don't need to change the law in order to add that kind of an addendum. Um, you'd have to pass a new law. Sure. Well, that's but not going to happen. That in New Zealand. You can just pass a new law. But they're not right. going to. Why would they make it harder for the government to do what they want to do here? They're not going to do that. Once they realize that this is complete folly, they may have to. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe they'll figure that out. Uh, so let's talk about what it's actually going to do. The HDC Act's takedown orders and counter notices require personal information, both from the complainant and the original publisher. I mean, you got to imagine there's going to be a group of people in, in New Zealand that are going to start reporting everything a politician posts as emotionally disturbing. It's just, it's, oh, I mean, it's so easy to do that. That sounds like a good idea, actually. Yeah. Now, you might actually be able to report from outside of New Zealand as well. It's not real clear. Uh, a user attempting to keep his content up must hand over his name and a telephone number, physical address, and an email address to the ISP. A user must also specify whether that data should be handed over to the complainant. A user who checks the wrong box by mistake may find her attempt to restore her account results in personal details being handed over to the person trying to delete the works from the internet in the first right. place. There's also no repercussions for overzealous enforcement. Again, that's correct. So anyone who works at one of these ISPs who has something in for one of these politicians could obviously go ahead and enforce at whim. Against whoever they wanted to. So if you work for an ISP in New Zealand and you want to start taking down politicians' comp, uh, content, just have a friend tell you that it's emotionally disturbing. You yep. can start taking down anything you want. Go for it. it. It'll be fun. Section 20 is clearly an attempt to create a streamlined way for injured users to speedily remove content that they find seriously emotionally distressing from the Internet without having to go through the slower process of judicial oversight. But given the precedent set by the DMCA, New Zealand's lawmakers should have anticipated that such a short circuit can and will be abused. Section 20's current design means that the most likely scenario for abuse is harassers either misusing it to erase their targets from the net or extracting from them personally identifying information that will ultimately be used against them. It's almost engineered to be a tool for angry mobs or doxing attackers. Despite warnings from the internet community, the HDC Act sailed through New Zealand's parliament with an overwhelming majority, opposed yep. only by a small yep. number of Green MPs. There's 160 people that need to find out exactly what they passed. And the, six, uh, the single MP for their New names Zealand's are publicly available. Free Market Act Party. The act received royal assent on Monday, which means it has passed into law. <laughs> royal oh. assent. Yep. I, love I declare yep. this law is now... Bye, Joe. I'll <laughs> declare this. <laughs> While much of the HDC Act only comes into force within two years, Section 20 is already in effect. Oh, so oh. the worst part is already happening. Oh. New Zealand-based intermediaries or foreign companies with offices in New Zealand must already comply with takedown requests or risk losing their liability protections. And like the DMCA, 
Much of the negative consequences of this act may turn out to be too hard to track. An invisible set of victims, the subject of takedowns that they do not know or are too intimidated to counter notice against, speech that is no longer published because intermediaries are too cautious to host it, or because potential speakers fear liability under the HDC Act. And that, unfortunately, is the optimistic scenario. Instead, New Zealand may be entering a far more bumpy ride, with the HDC being turned into a weapon of those it was originally intended to thwart. Online bullies who want to intimidate and silence others and are perfectly happy to abuse a well-meaning law to do so. And that is an excellent rundown of what to expect here now in New Zealand. If you are listening to this program, it's probably pretty early in the morning in New Zealand right now. Uh, but if you are you know, familiar with what's happening there, has, you know, I don't know how many days this has been in effect for us. Let's see, it was Royal Assented to on Monday. So we're coming up on the first full business week here that this law has been in play. Wow. Uh, what has already started to happen, if anything, if you want to tell us that, you'll have to do it tomorrow because we're out of time for tonight. It has been Ian here with you. And Johnson. And Danica. See you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 9th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.36 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,162 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $272. Antiwar.com reports Yemen's Hadi government in exile, backed by ongoing Saudi attacks on the country, aiming to reinstall them, yesterday informed the United Nations that they are open to a conditional truce that would end the war, issuing a series of demands. The Hadi offer, according to a spokesman, was to back an end to the Saudi attacks on Yemen in return for the Shiite Houthis agreeing to cede them four provinces. None of the provinces were specified and were only said to be in the east and 
south of the country. That's not all they want, however, as Hadi is demanding a release of several prisoners held by the Houthis, including their defense minister and some other top officials. The UN confirmed receipt of the truce offer. There has been no formal response by the Houthis, however, and they're probably not going to agree to give up four provinces of the country to the Hadi faction in return for a truce. The Houthis have sought an agreement on a transition to an elected government, something the Hadi government opposes. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a judge on Tuesday ordered Time Warner Cable to pay a Texas woman $229,500 for harassing her with 163 robocalls meant for another customer. U.S. District Judge Alvin Hellerstein in Manhattan said the cable company went too far when it continued making robocalls to Araceli King of Irving, Texas, 153 of them after she told the company that they had the wrong number. After getting 10 phone calls from the company, between July and October 2013, King had a seven-minute conversation with a Time Warner representative telling them the customer they were trying to call, Louise Perez, did not have the mobile phone number she has. The phone number had been assigned to her by Sprint after Perez had used it. Time Warner called King 153 more times, including 74 phone calls that came after King filed a lawsuit in March 2014. Hellerstein said Time Warner Cable's actions were particularly egregious and said that the company did not take the lawsuit seriously, so he tripled the penalty to $1,500 per phone call. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Baltimore Police Commissioner Anthony Batts was fired on Wednesday following criticism of his handling of rioting over the death of a man from an injury in police custody and a skyrocketing homicide rate. Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake said the focus on Batts and the leadership of the 2,500 officer force had become a distraction in fighting resurgent crime and was hurting her goal of attracting families to the city. She told a City Hall news conference, as we have seen in recent weeks, many continue to die. Families are tired of feeling the pain, and so am I. Batts, who came to Baltimore from California in September 2012, had a reputation as a reformer and will be replaced on an interim basis by Deputy Commissioner Kevin Davis. Batts came under fire for his handling of rioting following the funeral of Freddie Gray on April 27th. Gray died after suffering an injury while being transported in a police van, heightening a national debate on police treatment of minorities. Six officers have been charged in his death. Bats and other commanders told officers to hold the line with riders rather than confront people causing damage or threatening police. His cautious response was seen as an improvement over other cities, such as Ferguson, Missouri, that had used heavy-handed tactics to shut down protests after complaints of police brutality. But Bats came under criticism for not being better prepared for the rioting. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.